Driffle. Well, it is the Bell Game. We're live from Cal Jones Field on the campus of Central Union High School in El Centro, California. The 76th renewal of the Bell Game. And tonight may very well be one of the best games in the 76 years of this particular rivalry. Both teams come in 7-2. and two. Both teams highly rated in the San Diego section Division Three brackets. And uh, tonight, it's not just the Bell. It's the Imperial Valley League Championship. And it should be one of the top four seeds in the playoffs, which would guarantee a first-round bye and home field advantage during the playoffs. John Driffle has some of the uh, history of the Bell game rivalry, and we'll get to that coming up on AM 1230 KXO. The CB Stop, located at the corner of Cole and Bowker Road in Calexico, is your one-stop location for ice-cold beer, wine, and your favorite beverages. They have a selection of sandwiches, chips, snacks, ice. You can even get fishing bait and a fishing license. The CB Stop has it all, along with a gas station with diesel and a car wash. Open 24 hours a day. The CB Stop, located in Calexico at the corner of Cole and Bowker Road. Flautas y sopes, delicious authentic Mexican food, just six forty nine for a dozen flautas. Combo meals for any appetite, with three locations in the valley. 715 Cesar Chavez Boulevard in Calexico, 1531 Ford Drive next to Foods for Less in El Centro, and 1622 South 4th Street next to Soul Market in El Centro. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in Calexico, and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. in El Centro. Don't forget, you can go online for our menu and call in your order ahead of time. Flautas y sopes, the real deal. Hi, this is Julie Oliver. As your local Allstate agent, providing protection that fits your life, I am committed to learning about your needs and personalizing protection to meet them. Contact me at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability, life insurance offered through Allstate Life Insurance Company and Allstate Assurance Company, Northbrook, Illinois, and American Heritage Life Insurance Company, Jacksonville, Florida. No matter what you need to keep your home cool and comfortable, R&K Air Conditioning has it. From complete TempStar cooling systems to the latest in Wi-Fi capable thermostats, we have everything you need to stay comfortable. That's why you should make R&K Air Conditioning your first and only call for your cooling needs. Call 760-353-7570 or find us online at rkair.net. TempStar, quality you can feel. It's high school football. We're live on AM 1230 KXO El Centro and on the World Wide Web at KXORadio.com. I'm Carol Buckley. With me in the booth, John Triffle. Our producer engineer is Gabe Lemus and uh, technical assistance provided by Mr. Kurt Hoffman. John Driffle, you've done the research. Let's take a look at the history of the Bell game. Well, the very first Bell game was actually played in 1944, but it was 22 years before that when Central and Brawley played the first time, 1922. So, yeah, you can go ahead and add them up, Carol. That means this is a 97th year in a row that Brawley Central has played each other in football, and in three more years it will be the 100th anniversary. The Bell game started in 1944. Central and Brawley played each other twice a year for many, many years. And because of that, this is actually the longest played rivalry of any two high schools in the nation. There's no two high schools in the United States that have played each other in football more than the Central Spartans have played the Brawley Wildcats. Getting back to the Bell game, Brawley has owned the Bell. Their record of the 75 Bell games is 47 wins, only 27 losses. Obviously, Central's 27 wins. And there was one tie back in the day. That would go way back before we were here. And one of the reasons it ended in a tie was it was a monsoon-type football game. And uh, they just decided at the end of the game to just call it a tie, and everybody went their own separate ways. So last year, Central has made the string two straight, beating Brawley. Before that, Brawley had run off seven straight. 
And uh, the interesting thing is you've done some research too, Carol. You can see the different scores about the last, say, 12 Bell games. Central has won their three previous Bell games by four points, five points, three points. Brawley, meanwhile, is averaging about a 35-point victory in their Bell games, won a couple by more than 40 points. The closest game was five years ago when Brawley pulled out a 25-21 victory. So Brawley has dominated the total action, having 47 to 27 victories. Uh, not twice as much, but 20 more. Uh, but recently, Central, with this great group of seniors, has two straight victories, looking for their third. And Coach Pena, so far, has been undefeated against his former mentor, John Self, on the other sidelines. Well, one of the things that Coach uh, Pena has brought is instilled the, uh, the spirit that the uh, Central Spartans had years ago. And we must tell you, Travis Gray just led the Spartans out onto the field riding a beautiful paint pony and uh, wearing the Spartan gear and uh, circling the field. And we understand this is the first performance for the horse, not for Travis, but for the horse. And we would be remiss if we did not mention that is reminiscent of the chariot, the Spartan chariot, pulled by Tom and Jerry, the cameo Clydesdales, with uh, Jack Kirby at the reins. Now, Jack is still around. Tom and Jerry have gone to the great clover farm in the sky. But uh, 90-year-old Jack Kirby is still around, and I know he's listening tonight. And, uh, Jack, let's hope that uh, Travis and his new paint pony, uh, you know, they made an impression. We will uh, continue with our pregame festivities coming up on AM 1230 KXO. Start the day off right by having breakfast at Broken Yoke Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in the Imperial Valley by our customers. Thank you. Remember, Broken Yoke strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yoke Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yoke Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. It's the Beauty Fall Flooring Sale now until November 30th. Dermis Floor Covering is offering 24 months special financing on Shaw Floors, Anderson Tough Decks, and Cortec Flooring. Whether you need carpet, hardwood, vinyl, or something to withstand pets, kids, or water, rest assured there's flooring that's just right for your lifestyle on approved credit. Visit Dermis Flooring at 220 North J Street in Imperial. At Tyler Insurance, we're proud to have served Imperial Valley's businesses and families since 1921. Now as part of Gallagher, we're committed to bringing you the same team and exceptional service with expanded offerings in insurance, risk management, and consulting services. Together, we're dedicated to helping your business and your community face their future with confidence. Visit AJG.com forward slash Tyler to learn more about our new partnership with Gallagher. You're listening to High School Football on AM 1230 KXOL Central and on the World Wide Web at KXORadio.com. Well, the national anthem has uh, just been played, and uh, pretty soon the captains will be gathering at the uh, midfield strike, and uh, we will be getting underway. John, we have seen Central four or five times. We've seen Brawley one time. Both teams, in our humble opinions, pretty evenly matched. Oh, absolutely. They've got two great programs. You've got excellent leadership on the Central Spartans. That starts at the top with David Pena. And I know I've mentioned several times, I believe Coach John Self, across the way at Raleigh, is the dean of coaches. Uh, he had his 100th varsity game as a head coach at Raleigh last Friday. 71 and 29 over those 100 games. So both of them will have their kids ready. The only advantage for Central, other than this being a home game, is the quarterback for Brawley's only a freshman. Will he have the freshman jitters? And probably not. The young man has 1,440 total yards, hasn't played like a freshman. So uh, 
you know, that could be a factor later on. Central is a senior-laden team at the skill positions, and uh, Brawley has an excellent offensive and defensive line that is senior-laden as well. So I expect a, just a really close game like we've seen the last several years. Well, one of the things uh, that, uh, you know, you can always put out there is the fact that, uh, okay, it's the bell game. All bets are off. And uh, that, in many respects, is true tonight with these two very evenly matched teams. At the uh, midfield stripe, the captains are meeting. We should point out that uh, Imperial County Superintendent of Schools, Todd Fennell, Dr. Fennell, is there. And with him is the Central Athletic Director, Sandy Nujheim. Sandy told us two years ago this would be her last year. The announcement made official this evening that uh, she will be retiring after uh, many years teaching, coaching, and uh, finishing a career as an athletic director. Dr. Fennell tossed the coin. John Seaman, who is wearing the white hat with a hybrid all-star officiating crew, is... Uh, going over the uh, words with uh, the captains of both teams. And uh, the uh, Spartans won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. And we will have a football game coming up very shortly. Hacienda Snack Bar, bringing you catering at its best for your next party or event. They'll do it right. Let them do the work for you. From appetizers to full course meals, like their tri-tip dinner with their famous cheesy potatoes. Call Hacienda Snack Bar today for your next event at 344-5542. That's 344-5542. Or stop by Hacienda Snack Bar, 941 K Street in Brawley. The 2019 edition of High School Football is on the air. Tonight's game on AM 1230 KXO El Centro and on the World Wide Web at KXORadio.com is brought to you by La Fonda Bar and Grill in El Centro, the CB Stop in Calexico, Hacienda Snack Bar at Catering in Brawling, Julie Oliver of Dickey Insurance Services, the Hopeville Athletic Club, Stan's Auto Body in El Centro, McNeese Mart at Dogwood and Maine, El Centro. We're just about ready for the kickoff, so let's go out to the field live with Carol Buckley and John Dripple. Well, we are very much live from Cal Jones Field on the campus of Central Union High School. Setting up to do the kicking, it's Jose Berlin Torres. Back to receive deep is Damian Reyes and Nathan Torres. Berlin Torres, for the most part this year, has been putting it in the end zone for touchbacks. And this time, he will drive it deep, and it will be a touchback. The Brawley Wildcats will put it in play first and ten on their own 20-yard line. The Smart is the one-stop convenience store with everything you need to get you through your day. Fill your tank with V-Power from Shell, and then visit the deli for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Choose your favorite deli sandwich or hot stuff pizza, or be the office for your next party with their giant 52-inch pizza. Daily specials on selected foot-long subs for only $6. Yes, McNeese Smart is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Dogwood and Main Street in El Centro. Freshman Ethan Gutierrez brings his team out. He's got Damian Reyes and Blake Krigbaum in the backfield. Krigbaum, the big guy, 5'6", 185, he's a senior, and he runs the football like, stop me, if you can. Yeah, and so far, teams haven't. He's got 21 touchdowns on the year. Everybody's in tight. The Spartans jump. That'll cost him five. Freshman? No, Ethan Gutierrez isn't a freshman. He's got nine games under his belt, seven wins. Yeah, let's credit that to Coach John Self. He had his team ready, prepared, said we're going to give him a nice, hard, long count, and Central wasn't able to stay in form and broke the plane, so now you've got first and five. Gutierrez, hands up to Krigbaum. Krigbaum up the middle. Krigbaum across the 30 to the 35 to the 40, the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Blake Krigbaum. 
a 75-yard touchdown on the first play of the game. And he continues to impress. He outran the Spartan defenders. We're talking a guy five foot six, one eighty-five. And that's exactly how the game started with uh, Southwest and Central. Point after attempt, the kick is up. The kick is there's yeah, there could, no kick. Yeah, there they could be uh, offside. Central was trying to get players out on the field. There was several players standing on the sideline. Central only had ten players on the line of scrimmage. So I think that uh, Coach Seaman is going to go ahead and have them re-kick, let Central get set, get everybody out there, and that's what they're going to do now. So it's uh, like a mulligan, a do-over. Xavier Parieda will kick it right through. Kick it right through. We're barely underway. 11.47 to play in the first quarter. And our score, Brawley 7 Central nothing. When you're hungry and you want delicious home-style cooking, there are two locations in the Imperial Valley that have the best. Brownie's Diner, 990 Main Street in Brawley, open seven days a week, 5.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., offering delicious breakfast and lunch entrees, including ribeye steak, liver and onions, and meatloaf every Tuesday. The original town pump in Westmoreland is open 4 p.m. till 9 p.m. They're closed Mondays. Brownie's Diner in Brawley and the original town pump in Westmoreland. Bo and his team of employees at Stan's Auto Body are constantly striving on giving you 100% satisfaction on getting your vehicle repaired and fixed right. Stan's Auto Body is grateful from the support that they hear and being rated number one with CarWise.com. Yes, accidents are disturbing and Stan's Auto Body is here for you. Stan's Auto Body works with all insurance companies. Give them a call or stop by 1880 West Euclid Avenue in El Centro. Well, turnabout spare play. Parade down. Put it into the end zone. Touchback. The Spartans will put it in play first and ten on their 20-yard line. We've got to give props. Craig Baum, Blake Craig Baum, did it behind uh, some mighty fine offensive blocking by his, uh, his line. They opened up big gaping hole, and he just filled it. And then at the end, Carol, he broke about three tackles about 15 yards down the line of scrimmage and then took off, and they couldn't catch him. De Niro Osuna brings him out. Spread formation. Play action, fires it. It is complete out at the 30 to the 33-yard line. Michael Sullivan on the slant. Spotted on the 33. Our officials tonight, John Seaman. You called him coach, I call him sergeant. Juan Liao, Benny Carter, Sean McLaughlin, and Nathan Dinkins. Quick snap, rolling to his right, looking downfield, Osuna fires, and it goes incomplete. So two plays, two passes. That time Osuna got a little bit too much air underneath the football. Damian Reyes in coverage. Central had three players, one up, one in the middle, one deep in that pass pattern, and Osuna chose the middle player. Good defense by the cornerback for the Wildcats over there. That would be Jaden Figueroa made the pass go high. It is second and ten. Morales in motion, the handoff right up the middle, and uh, that would be on the carry. It would be Jonathan Medina. And he picks up yardage out to the 37-yard line. Pick up a four, third and four. Yeah, excellent run by Medina. And let's give Central some props. Brand new uniforms, Carol, so it's a little tough to pick out their numbers. They've got two tones. Rolling to his right again, Osuna looks, fires. He's got a man wide open, and he dropped it. Beautifully designed play. The man was open. Eight yards downfield, and he dropped it. Yeah, that would have been enough for a first down without a doubt. So very similar start to the Gila Ridge game we saw here where we had some drop passes. And that was actually a play off of what they did, their their first incompleted pass where they had the three players out there and Osuna chose to throw to the middle. That time he chose the up man wide open but couldn't make the play. Marilyn Torres will punt it deep 
and it'll bounce at the 30, roll down inside the 20, and be down at the 18. Wildcats put it in play first and 10 on their own 18-yard line. The CB Stop, located at the corner of Cole and Bowker Road in Calexico, is your one-stop location for ice-cold beer, wine, and your favorite beverages. They have a selection of sandwiches, chips, snacks, ice. You can even get fishing bait and a fishing license. The CB Stop has it all, along with a gas station with diesel and a car wash. Open 24 hours a day. The CB Stop, located in Calexico at the corner of Cole and Bowker Road. First and ten, Wildcats, they have it on their own 18-yard line. Krigbaum, single setback. Ethan Gutierrez, under center. Again, everybody in tight double slot. Handoff, it is Krigbaum, same play. This time he's hit. He'll pick up four yards. And he's got such a low center of gravity, John. Okay, going back. To the leather helmet era. Okay, I played at 5'6", 120 pounds. He is 5'6", 185 pounds. Quick, fast, shifty, everything you want in a running back. They're very reminiscent of Gerald Robinson with those thick, huge thighs that he has developed. It is second and seven. Rubio in the center. Pitch is back. It is Chavez, and Chavez will sweep the left side. And he'll pick up the seven yards. That should be good for the first down. Yeah, Raleigh you know, staple spotted. over the years. That, that sweep, Carol. There it is. Spotted on the 29, first and 10. The Wildcats split Reyes wide on the right side. Chavez wide on the left side. Krigbaum. Now they're shuffling people around. Krigbaum is in the backfield. And again, the Spartans jump. It'll be first and five. Gutierrez clapped his hands, and the Spartans jumped. Yeah, there's a discussion now among the officials of whether or not they were drawn off site, so we'll see what the call is right now by John Seaman, and he said it is going to be procedural. We saw that before, Carol, where the quarterback is limited to what he can do to kind of uh, trick or fool the other team. There's a certain amount that he's allowed but too much movement and noise, and he can be called, and that's what, that's what happened. Gutierrez from the shotgun. Snap back, Gutierrez will keep it. He goes off left tackle and loses the football. The Spartans pick it up and race into the end zone. It'll be a touchdown. Gutierrez coughed up the football in a crowd. And the Spartans scooped it up and took it in for the score. And I believe it was Bettina, John. I believe it was Jonathan Medina that took it in. He knows the way to the end zone, but that would have been like a 37-yard uh, fumble return. Yeah, Carol, we need to give credit to Angel Navas Barsic because he's the one that not only stripped the football but ran it back the 37 yards for the touchdown in Central's first score. Okay. Well, Navas, Barsic, and Medina, they're a pair. The kick is up. The kick is good. So, with 8.58 to play in the first quarter, we're tied at 7. Hi, this is Julie Oliver. As your local Allstate agent, providing protection that fits your life, I am committed to learning about your needs and personalizing protection to meet them. Contact me at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability, life insurance offered through Allstate Life Insurance Company and Allstate Assurance Company, Northbrook, Illinois, and American Heritage Life Insurance Company, Jacksonville, Florida. The Central Spartans score in a hurry on a strip of Ethan Gutierrez on a quarterback keeper. That was just designed for him to keep it, follow Krigbaum off left tackle, and Angel Nava Esparza stripped him. Picked up the football, 
and took it into the end zone. Berlin Torres will put it deep into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, first and ten for the Wildcats on their own 20-yard line. Start the day off right by having breakfast at Broken Yoke Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in the Imperial Valley by our customers. Thank you. Remember, Broken Yoke strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yoke Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yoke Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. Ethan Gutierrez brings them out. And again, everybody in tight. Krigbaum, the only running back. Gutierrez under center. Hands off Krigbaum right up the gut. Krigbaum stood up. Not till he picks up four yards. But if you can stop him at four, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, excellent push by the Brawley line. Nathan Gutierrez, the freshman quarterback. Let's see how he responds to that devastating strip, fumble, and touchdown after Brawley looked like they might just walk through this central team. Big turnover by none other than Navis Barca. He's been doing that his whole career here. It is a pickup of four, second and six from the shotgun. Rubio calls out the blocking assignments. He's the center. Big gaps on the left side. Gutierrez fires. It's complete. Under the uh, under the defense, completed to Nathan Torres. Nine-yard pickup, first pass attempt, and first completion for Brawley. Osuna on the other side, one for three so far. Brawley with their third first down. Spread it out a little bit. Krigbaum in a slot. Yeah, a little different seeing the team huddle up and not be running that hurry-up offense like we've seen everybody run this year, Carol. Gutierrez moving people around, and now... Yeah, we had everybody jump that time, so we'll just have to wait and let the uh, officials figure it out. That's because there was moving on the line, meeting the offensive line of the tight, the Wildcats. And one of the uh, one of the offensive linemen got up limping after that. I think somebody stepped on him in the pile. It is first and fifteen. Handoff. It is stopped for no gain. Actually, a loss of a yard. Yeah, that was Craig Bomb. No, it wasn't. It was Damian Reyes. Krigbaum was out in the uh, slot as a wide right. receiver. Yeah, we'll see if they try to run that play again. Central was blitzing both linebackers, Navis Barsa and Medina, and they converged right there on the halfback. And that'll be another loss. Looks like about a two-yard loss. First negative play other than the penalties for Brawley tonight. That'll bring up now second and 17. From the shotgun, Gutierrez, back to pass, has some time, now the time ends, and he's chased out of the pocket, he's hit and sacked at the 25-yard line, and Medina in there, and with Mr. Medina getting a piece of uh, that sack was uh, Carlos Hernandez. That'll bring up third and 19. I'm sure the Brawley coaching staff realized that Central had left one of the flankers uncovered. They had two wideouts to the left, and only one cornerback was over there for Central. Now, perhaps that was by design, but uh, Gutierrez was not looking that way, and great pressure by the Central interior defensive line. From the shotgun, Krigbaum right next to Gutierrez. Now again, the Spartans, or rather the uh, Wildcats, jump. And his uh, his count may also get his own uh, offensive lineman a little bit discombobulated. That's, what, the third time they have been called for that. Right, third straight time, actually. They've had two uh, possessions after the one big, long run. And uh, in both possessions, they've had the missed snap. Third and about 26. 
and the handoff, Krigbaum, Krigbaum is hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. A swarm of Spartans in there, Angel Nava Esparza. No gain, it ring up fourth and 26. And obviously a punting situation. The uh, Bell game, 76th edition. There's the punt, a high and beautiful punt, and it's fair caught. And uh, it'll be first and ten for the uh, Spartans when they put it on play deep uh, on that punt. Juan Dominguez, the senior with a fair catch. So Spartans come out, first and ten. It's 7-7. Seven, seven. Barely underway. Yeah, Central right up on the line of scrimmage. Three right outs to the left, one to the right. Snap back, Osuna rolling to his left, fires, and it goes incomplete. Intended for Michael Sullivan. Sullivan tripped. Sullivan uh, covered by Adrian Chavez. He had about a yard on Chavez, but he tripped. Yes, yeah. Osuna let that go while he was on the run, threw it back across his body. Was not getting pressure. The design was to roll out. Raleigh does bring pressure, but that time Osuna could have set his feet. Misfired now three straight. Hand off right up the mid. No, it's play action, and the pass is completed to Fernando Morales. And Morales will pick up the first down as he crosses the midfield stripe, takes it down to the 43-yard line in Wildcat territory. No huddle. We've got the play. Let's run it. And on this, the uh, wing fly, the handoff, and a big hit, but staying on his feet and picking up a couple of yards for the uh, Spartans. Marcus Moore, a sophomore, John. We have not called his name much this year. Right, he's been getting more and more playing time. Uh, you remember the junior Carlos Gomez actually started a game or two, but uh, Moore has kind of worked his way into the plan for the coaching staff, and he had a good pickup there of six yards. Second and four. Morales in motion. The handoff right up the middle, and that would be Gomez. Carlos Gomez will get maybe a yard or two. Brought down by a host of Wildcats to include Jaden Figueroa. And uh, also in on the tackle, Blake Craigbaum. Yes, that is the same Craigbaum on defense. Quick hitter, and again, taking it right up the gut, and it is Angel Nava Esparza. And he picks up the first down, down to the 31-yard line. They'll mark it on the 32. That's still good for the first down. We're tied at 7. It's high school football. The Central Spartans, the Brawley Wildcats. And into the middle again. It is Angel Nava Esparza. Yes, he does go both ways, just like Craig Baum on the other side. Navas Barca picked up, looks like they're to give him all the way out for a five-yard pickup on first down. Second and five, quick hitter again, it is Navas Barza pushing the pile, staying on his feet down to the 20-yard line before he is finally wrapped up and brought down. That looked like uh, NFL tackling John Blake Krigbaum finally got there, wrapped him up and dropped him. But that, that was NFL-style tackling. I'll bump you and you'll fall down, and it doesn't happen. Well, Novice Bars also really showed his power, much like Craig Baum. You've got to tackle him, not just try to knock him off balance. Central got a good drive going. That's fourth first down here. Again, play action, dumping it off. It's complete, and it's a touchdown. Play action throws the Wildcats. Brian Martin all alone at the five. And took it in for the score. A 20-yard touchdown pass 
Osuna to Brian Martin. And yes, that is Brian Martin, son of Brian Martin, grandson of Lefty, who has not been getting offensive snaps, leading one of the team leaders in defense and tackles. We'll have the point after attempt. Sebastian Coronel. Snap back, kick up, and the kick is good. We've got 2.17 to play in the first quarter. It is Central 14, and... Probably seven. Day in and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always come first. The Central Spartans, the Raleigh Wildcats, bell game, number 76. Spartans have the bell. They want to keep the bell. They've got a 14-7 lead, but hey, we got a lot of football to play in this one. Berlin Torres approaches. He'll boot it, and guess what? It goes into the end zone. Touchback. You cannot return the ball if it's into the end zone in high school. I don't worry anymore about getting stranded with my car breaking down. Why is that? That automotive class I took at Imperial Valley College not only prepared me to fix my own car, it also prepared me for a new career in automotive repair. I like the way you think. I've always wanted to become a welder. Then check out these and other IVC career education classes at imperial.edu. Well, we're barely underway. Two-thirds of the way through the first quarter, we've had three scores. One on a 75-yard run by the Wildcats, Blake Krigbaum. Another on a fumble recovery. And another on a 20-yard pass completion, both uh, second and third scoring by the uh, Spartans. Gutierrez hands off, and Krigbaum, no, he doesn't. He keeps it. Krigbaum was face-planted. The fake was that good. And then, when Gutierrez kept it, he got face-planted by another Spartan. I mean, Craig Baum, we've seen him play five. This would be the fifth quarter we've seen him play. That is the hardest I have seen him hit. Let's give credit over there to the Raleigh coaching staff. They realize that Central now has got everything stacked up to stop Craig Baum. So Gutierrez kept it, was able to pick up three positive yards, but he took a big hit as well. Well, it's what they're now calling the read option. And uh, Gutierrez read it. Under center, he hands off Craig Baum. Hits, spins. He gets it out to the 25, 26, 27-yard line is where he's down. It'll bring up third down at about three. Craig Baum spinning and churning. He keeps those legs moving. You would certainly think if you're on Raleigh sidelines, you figure three yards, this is crucial. We need to get some momentum back. Go ahead and give it to Craig Baum. I would certainly expect him to be able to pick up three yards. So far, he has been able to. He is the single setback. The chair is under center, unbalanced line. He runs it to the left. Craig Baum gets the three and about three more. He's out to the 35-yard line. So Krigbaum does get the yardage and moves the chains. Yeah, that was a well-designed play. They had a man in motion, and they ran like a counter where they were going to run to the left side, opposite the man in motion, and then Krigbaum cut back, picked up a good five, let's call that seven, eight yards. He got an eight-yard carry all the way out to the 35. Carlos Hernandez on the tackle. And off on the sweep, trying to follow Craig Baum was Adrian Chavez. And Craig Baum's a good blocker, but Chavez just didn't have uh, didn't have any room. Spartans closed in. Yeah. Vincent leads Mountain Empire 14-7 in the first quarter, John. Imperial 8, Palo Verde 6, also first quarter. And that's the end of the first quarter here, Carol. At the end of the first quarter of play, our score... 
It is Central 14, Brawley 7. When you're hungry and you want delicious home-style cooking, there are two locations in the Imperial Valley that have the best. Brownie's Diner, 990 Main Street in Brawley, open seven days a week, 5.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., offering delicious breakfast and lunch entrees, including ribeye steak, liver and onions, and meatloaf every Tuesday. The original town pump in Westmoreland is open 4 p.m. till 9 p.m. They're closed Mondays. Brownie's Diner in Brawley and the original town pump in Westmoreland. Bo and his team of employees at Stan's Auto Body are constantly striving on giving you 100% satisfaction on getting your vehicle repaired and fixed right. Stan's Auto Body is grateful from the support that they hear and being rated number one with CarWise.com. Yes, accidents are disturbing, and Stan's Auto Body is here for you. Stan's Auto Body works with all insurance companies. Give them a call or stop by 1880 West Euclid Avenue in El Centro. You're listening to High School Football on AM 1230 KXOL Centro and on the World Wide Web at KXORadio.com. It's High School Football. We're live on AM 1230 KXOL Centro, California. The 76th edition of the Bell Game. The Central Spartans, Brawley Wildcats, Central right now holding a 14-7 lead. Brawley has the football. It'll be second down and about eight as the ball is on the Wildcat 37-yard line. Some discussion on uh, the field right now. Don't have any idea what this could be other than want to make sure they got the right football out there but uh, one of the officials is over on the uh, Brawley sideline and I can't quite tell looks like he's working on the chain there may have been a knot in the chain which would instead of making it second and ten would make it second and nine and a fraction but uh, actually we've got second and about eight here the whole stadium all standing waiting wondering players hands on hips and, well, it's got to be a 10-yard chain, okay? You're if right. there's a knot in it, it's not going to be 10 yards. If it's broken, got to fix it. It's kind of like my fishing line, John. Yeah. It just kind of tangles itself sometimes. Yeah, it looks like they're going to have to go ahead and um, get a new chain. It looks like the way the referees, well, let's see. He's coming over here. I thought he sent the players to the sidelines, but now they've returned to the field. So everything must be copacetic. We're going to go ahead and. Second day. Okay. Penny Carter took care of it. Yeah, now Second Coach, and eight. Coach Self has made sure none of the Brawley players are stepping out on the chain, keeping them back. Don't want any more delays. Brawley looks across the way, getting the play called in, ready to go. Gutierrez from the shotgun. Craig Baum is next to him. Hands it off to Craig Baum on a little cross action. Craig Baum hit, bounces off of one would be tackler. And picks up about nine yards, but there is a flag. Yeah, this is going to come back because the player in motion turned up field. So Craig Vaughn got the eight yards needed for the first down, but I'm sure the officials saw what I saw. And here comes illegal motion. You can't turn up field before the ball's hiked. You can in Canada. And I don't think anybody on the Brawley side would question that. It was pretty obvious. Very untypical of Brawley, but does show the stress having lost two straight Bell games. These kids are under making mistakes you usually don't make. Jumping off sides, jumping in motion. Clock is in motion now after that being the first play to start the second quarter. It'll be second down and about 14. I think they gave them a seven-yard penalty, John. Gutierrez. Ethan Gutierrez from the shotgun, moving people around again, and he'll keep it, and he'll get it back to the 30. He'll lose a yard, but you got to point out Damian Reyes on the fake once again. The fake took a big, big hit. That comes back. The Damian Reyes is the man in motion, and that's who... Gutierrez did not give the ball to, but I'm sure on second thought he wished he would have because he just got sandwiched by the two upmen for the Central Spartans. And that points out the 
tenacity of the Spartan defense. They're hitting anybody in the backfield. Yeah, Carlos Hernandez and Nathan Sanchez on that tackle. Third and 17, Broly in a spread. Now you put uh, in motion Craig Baum, and Craig Baum is hit and dropped by Jonathan Medina. He'll lose another five yards. Yeah. Craig Baum has been hit twice tonight. And I can almost guarantee you he has not been hit that hard this year. Well, after that nice 75-yard first play, things have turned south for Brawley. Completed pass, keeping Gutierrez perfect two for two, but unfortunately that was for yards. a negative yard. A five-yard loss on the completed pass. Medina all over Craig Baum and hit him hard, stopped him in his tracks, and I have not seen that before. Here comes the punt. It's away. Another beautiful punt, but it's short, and it'll be downed by the Wildcats on the their own 47-yard line. So the Spartans will take over with absolutely excellent field position. Flauta Fisopes, delicious, authentic Mexican food. Just six forty nine for a dozen flautas. Combo meals for any appetite. With three locations in the valley: seven fifteen Caesar Chavez Boulevard in Calexico, fifteen thirty one Ford Drive next to Foods for Less in El Centro. And the Spartans ready to play. Morales in motion. The handoff up the middle. Gomez and Gomez gets about five. Earlier in the games that we saw, John, Gomez got a start, a couple of starts, got a lot of ball carries. Angel Nava Esparza and Jonathan Medina, who did the bulk of the ball carrying last year, very little on the offensive side. And both playing a lot of defense. Their legs are fresh. Yes, and uh, Craig Baum was in on the tackle. He's out in the field every snap as well. Gain of three, second and seven, rolling to his left, being chased is Osuna. He'll keep it, and he'll step out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. He'll pick up two yards or so. And, okay, they say he went out of bounds at the 44. And that's right at the line of scrimmage, so his first carry of the night. No gain. Brings up third and seven now. Gomez, Carlos. His first name is in the backfield. Central once again up on the line of scrimmage. No huddle. Got the play called in. Three wide outs to the right, one to the left. Third and seven. Morales in motion. Back to pass. Osuna dumps it off. It is complete to Moore. Turns it up. He's at the 40 and down at the 30-yard line. So the uh, sophomore with another completion. Marcus Moore. We'll carry it down to the 30-yard line and pick up another first down. And we haven't seen him all year, and here he's really playing a big part in the first half here of the Bell game. First and 10. Spartans from the Wildcat 30. Handoff right up the middle. Gomez has a seam. Is at the 20. Down to the 15. Spin stays on his feet down to the 10-yard line. Carlos Gomez... 19-yard pickup, Carroll. It should be first and goal. Just inside the 10. No, just outside the 10. First and 10 from the 11. And the uh, Wildcats will be... No, they're caught. calling timeout because they had 12 players on the field, so okay. they call timeout. Call timeout just in time. We'll take timeout. 8.34 to play in the first half. It is Central 14. And Brawley... Seven. Flautas y sopes, delicious authentic Mexican food, just six forty nine for a dozen flautas. Combo meals for any appetite, with three locations in the valley. Seven fifteen Caesar Chavez Boulevard in Calexico, fifteen thirty one Ford Drive next to Foods for Less in El Centro, and sixteen twenty two South Fourth Street next to Soul Market in El Centro. Open Monday through Saturday, nine a.m. to nine p.m. Sundays, eight a.m. to eight p.m. in Calexico, and nine a.m. to nine p.m. in El Centro. Don't forget, you can go online for our menu and call in your order ahead of time. Flautas y sopes, the real deal. It's the Beauty Fall Flooring Sale now until November 30th. Dermis Floor Covering is offering 24 months special financing on Shaw Floors, Anderson Tough Decks, and Cortec Flooring. Whether you need carpet, hardwood, vinyl, or something to withstand pets, kids, or water, rest assured there's flooring that's just right for your lifestyle on approved credit. Visit Dermis Flooring at 220 North J Street in Imperial. 
High School Football. We're live on AM 1230 KXO, El Centro, and on the web at kxoradio.com. It is first and ten. Spartans on the Brawley 11-yard line. De Niro Osuna from the shotgun. Carlos Gomez right next to him. Looking downfield, chased out of the pocket, stays on his feet, and then is finally down and dumps it off. That should be intentional grounding. He was down anyway, so the ball is going to be back at the 27-yard line. Yeah, they're going to push, push this back five more yards. As he was able to evade the first on rushers, he kept his balance. Then another rusher came in and just knocked his feet out underneath him, and he tried to get rid of the ball on the way down. If he would have thrown it right away, he would have been clear. But uh, this is going to be the sack was back, as you call it, to the 28-yard line. And then they're going to add... Three, uh, five more yards, putting the ball all the way back to the 33. So it'll be state first down. First and they've got to get it to the one, and they're on the 33. Yeah, actually, so let me do my math. That would be first and 32. John, what do you got in the playbook for that one? Yeah, not only 32, but it's 32, a long 32. They've got to get it almost all the way to the goal line to get a first down. As now the referees are going to cross the way to the Brawley sideline. Uh, perhaps someone Just over there. Just taking asked, his position. Uh, yeah. Somebody's asking for a discussion as well as now we're all set to go. Osuna from the shotgun. Osuna rolling to his left. Osuna looking fires downfield and it's caught and it's down at the three yard line. Beautifully thrown. A miraculous catch. Yeah, we've got a Brawley player that's down. And is that Medina that caught it? The uh, new uniforms are impossible to read numbers. No, it wasn't Medina. It was Morales. Fernando Morales on the catch. It's a 30-yard game. Michael Sullivan? Okay. And the handoff in the middle? Nothing. That'll bring up fourth and about a yard. Actually, the pass was on first down, so we had second down was the run right there. Looked like a Medina. Uh, they're showing fourth. That can't be. Oh, that's right. On the uh, penalty, you lose loss of down on yes. a um, grounding, intentional grounding. So that is absolutely correct. Timeout on the field, 732 to play in the uh, first half. It is Central 14 and Brawley 7. Start the day off right by having breakfast at Broken Yolk Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in the Imperial Valley by our customers. Thank you. Remember, Broken Yolk strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yolk Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yolk Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. It is fourth down and about... Uh Four. Yeah, and Central's going to go for the field goal. You want the points here. And we have the field goal attempt. The ball will be spotted on the 12. That'll make it a 22-yard attempt. Snap back, kick up, and the kick is good. 7.32 to play in the first half. It is Central 17 and Brawley 7. Hi, this is Julie Oliver. As your local Allstate agent, providing protection that fits your life, I'm committed to learning about your needs and personalizing protection to meet them. Contact me at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability, life insurance offered through Allstate Life Insurance Company and Allstate Assurance Company, Northbrook, Illinois, and American Heritage Life Insurance Company, Jacksonville, Florida. I don't worry anymore about getting stranded with my car breaking down. Why is that? That automotive class I took at Imperial Valley College not only prepared me to fix my own car, it also prepared me for a new career in automotive repair. I like the way you think. I've always wanted to become a welder. Then check out these and other IVC career education classes at imperial.edu. Okay, let's wait. It's still 14 to 7. As uh, play is stopped, the officials actually have met with both teams and both coaches and uh, discussing something, and we don't know what. Yeah, Brawley is back out on the field with their defensive team right there where the field goal would happen. Now, if this is a defensive penalty, Central could take the option of 
getting the yards, and if it's an automatic first down, obviously they'll take the points off the board. I did not see a flag anywhere. I did not see any indication of any kind of penalty, especially by Central. It was a clean snap. The kid kicked it. It went through. Everybody ran off the field, and now they all have come back. So uh, Coach Seaman is over here. Co- it's, it's, he's an official, not a coach. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, he does. Yeah, he coaches with the pop warning stuff. Okay. That, that's what I. But now we're getting. It's roughing the kicker, so that's an automatic first down. So they will take the points off the board. They'll move the ball half the distance of the goal, which the uh, original line scrimmage was the four. So they'll put it on the two, and it should be a first down. So they can get should rid of. Should be a first and goal from the two. Well, and, uh, now they're saying fourth down still. Maybe it was one of those running into the kickers, not a roughing. And the play blown dead, but they can't play because John Seaman was over on the sidelines talking to John Self. Yep, talking to the Brawley coaches. So there was no out. play. Yeah. They've actually taken the field goal off the board. Again, that's, I, I would assume that Coach Pena knows that it's fourth down. They did not give a personal foul automatic first down on roughing the kicker because they will need to put the ball across the down to make, which is literally the end zone. It is fourth and about a yard from the three. And the handoff, it is Medina, and Medina gets it down, and he gets it into the end zone. Well, we got one referee saying touchdown, and we've got all the Brawley kids saying it's their ball, but he didn't have to get it in the end zone. All he had to do was get Cross it. Cross the line. Right. So now we're all going to, now they've moved the ball back. Four I, a point after it. It looks yeah. like they put it back for the PAT. So it will be a touchdown. Give it to Medina. I'm sorry, Navis Parsa, his second touchdown of the evening. Okay. We'll recap all of this because we have an official in the booth. Snap back, kick up, kick is good. 7.29 to play in the first half. It is Central 21, Brawley 7. Okay, what happened? On the field goal attempt, Brawley was flagged for roughing the kicker, running into the kicker. Not roughing. It wasn't the 15-yard automatic first down. It was half the distance. It remained fourth down. Central came out, started to run a play, but then realized the White Hat, the referee, was on the sidelines talking to the Broly coach, John Self, about what the call and everything was. They come back. It is fourth down and two yards to go for a first down from the three. They hand the ball off to Angel Nava Esparza. He gets Gets it into the end zone. And now we have the kickoff. It is into the end zone, and it is a touchback. Okay, we're at that point now. Brawley said that Nava Esparza fumbled. Once he crosses the plane with the football, he can fumble. Doesn't make any difference. It's a touchdown. As soon as the point of the football reaches the very edge of the goal line. So, does that help make it clear? I hope so. It is first and ten following the touchback. Brawley brings it out on their own 20-yard line. Craig Baum, the single setback from, from the shotgun. I'm very grateful for Brawley's taking time. They're not running the hurry up. And Craig Baum on a little cross action in the backfield. He's hit, and he'll be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Nothing else there. Yeah, we've had all kinds of action going on, including they fired the cannon with the blue smoke. So we were seeing blue football players for a while in the blue football field. It reminds me of uh, being out in field exercises with the 150th field artillery firing 150, uh, you know, 105 rounds over our head all night. And what's a bell game without some controversy, Carol? As I'm sure Brawley will look back at that with all the things that happened, points taken off the board, given, taken, etc. Second and ten. Back to pass. Gutierrez chased out of the pocket. He's hit. He's dropped. He's sacked. 
and on the uh, sack for the uh, Spartans, Joseph Denton. Denton leads the Spartans. That would be his sixth sack of the year. And they're placing the ball down on the 19th, so that is a verified sack of one yard, bringing up third and 11 now. He's got personal foul face mask. It's going to take all that away, and it's going to give Raleigh a first down. They'll move it all the way out to the 35-yard line, so let's get rid of that one-yard loss. And it'll be first and 10 for Brawley. And they'll spot it on the 35. We've got 6.37 to play in the first quarter, I mean, in the first half. <laughs> We've had some excitement. 21-7, Central leads. You got that, Stanley? 21-7, Central over Brawley. And right now, the Brawley player that was a deep, an offensive lineman that had the face mask, he was the face mask that got grabbed. He had to leave the field because his helmet was off. So when your helmet does come off on the play of the field, you've got to exit. So he'll be out for a play. Double wide on the left side, the wide side. Wide on the right, slot on the right. Krigbaum, the single setback. Gutierrez looking downfield. Gutierrez chased out of the pocket. Trying to scramble, he crosses the 30 and will run out of bounds at the 36. He'll pick up a yard. And doing a lot of the chasing there was Joseph Hargrave. Adam Chavez downfield for the Wildcats blocking. So this Brawley team is well coached. No matter what happens the rest of this game, Carol, after that big opening 75-yard play on first down of the of the whole game. Uh, they still play with a lot of discipline, and Coach Self really has them in tune. It is second and nine. Empty backfield. Gutierrez tries to sweep, and he'll lose a yard. That was a quarterback keeper trying to sweep it to the right side and get some blocks, and the Spartans with penetration. Drop him back at the 34-yard line. Yeah, we've seen Brawley run that play for the 35 years we've been doing this. That's a staple. And with the freshman quarterback, not quite the precision they usually have. Plus, they had Craigbaum actually trailing that instead of leading for the blocking. No chance for the pitch to be made as Gutierrez was wrapped up. It is third and ten. Obvious passing play, so Brawley has four, three right outs to the right, one right out to the left. I've never seen Brawley in this formation before. Now Craig Baum floats out to the left as well. They fire it over the middle, and it's almost picked off. And the pass intended for Nathan Torres goes incomplete, and it'll bring up fourth and ten. And that was Marcus Moore, that super sophomore on the breakup, so... Now let's give credit to David Pena. Excellent job of coaching. He's got his defensive players where they need to be. That was a very well-designed play by Brawley. Craig Baum was rolling out behind those three wideouts as if they were going to be blockers, and they threw the ball over the middle. Kick is away. It's a high, very short kick, and it bounces at the 48-yard line, rolls Another 12 yards. It'll be down to the 40-yard line in Spartan territory. They will put it in play first and 10. Hacienda Snack Bar, bringing you catering at its best for your next party or event. They'll do it right. Let them do the work for you. From appetizers to full course meals, like their tri-tip dinner with their famous cheesy potatoes. Call Hacienda Snack Bar today for your next event at 344-5542. That's 344-5542. Or stop by Hacienda Snack Bar, 941 K Street in Brawley. De Niro Asuna brings him out from the shotgun. Morales goes in motion. And back to pass. Looking, firing deep downfield. Got more open. And it goes off his fingertips. Moore was two yards behind the coverage. And closing quick from his safety position was J.J. Fernandez. Yeah, more- but a little bit over... Thrown. Moore actually beat triple coverage, so let's give the coaching staff for Central further credit. They looks like they found a diamond, and Marcos Moore wasn't even on the roster, Carol, the first few games we were doing at the start of the year. It is second and ten. We'll see that play again. 
on the sweep, the handoff. It is Morales looking for some running room. Stays on his feet and picks up about three or four yards. He slipped, kept his balance by putting a hand down on the ground, which you can do. It's a gain of threes, third and seven. No huddle. We're going to get in, and we're going to get the plays. Osuna puts more in motion. Osuna fires. It is more. He catches it at the midfield stripe. He may be a half yard short. Let's see what kind of a spot he gets. It is a first down. The whole thing is going to depend upon... It is a first down. They spotted it on the Brawley side of the midfield strike, and that's good enough for the first down. Needed six yards, got six yards. More second catch. He's a sophomore, right? Yes, he is. And the Brawley quarterback's a freshman, right? Yes, and Central has a freshman of their own playing. We've called his name several times this year. Moore goes in motion. The handoff, it is up the middle. It is Gomez, Gomez. Holds on to the football tightly as he picks up eight quick yards down to the 43-yard line. Gomez, as we mentioned, was a starter the third game of the season and the fourth game of the season, then had as athletic director Sandy Newcham, who had her retirement announced on the PA, said he had a little bit of a brain cramp, so he was not getting any action for a couple games. Now he's back running very hard. Looks like he's learned his lesson. Rolling to his left, dumping it off and incomplete. The pass intended for Michael Sullivan. Big pressure. That was to be a screen. And uh, the Wildcats got in a little bit quicker than what the uh, Spartans wanted. It'll bring up third down. Wholesale shift of personnel on a third down, John. Well, I believe with what Coach Payne is doing is he's promised some of these kids, especially seniors, they're going to get some action. So you've got third and two, the other team's side, and they're just going to run it right up the middle. And stopped for no gain. I did not see who's at the bottom of the pile. Well, who was at the bottom of the pile was David Palacio. Palacio with a big hit. Chandler Self with a big hit. Also, Damon Damian Reyes. It'll bring up fourth down at about four. So the Spartans will punt. Dropping back is Torres and Reyes. Snap back. Kick is away. Beautiful punt. And it'll bounce at the 10 and kick back. It'll be down at the 20. It'll be first and 10 Brawley on their own 20-yard line. I don't worry anymore about getting stranded with my car breaking down. Why is that? That automotive class I took at Imperial Valley College not only prepared me to fix my own car, it also prepared me for a new career in automotive repair. I like the way you think. I've always wanted to become a welder. Then check out these and other IVC career education classes at imperial.edu. The Broadway Wildcats put it in play first and 10 on the 19-yard line. They trail 21-7. We've got 2.37 to play in the first half. Yeah, right now, Broadway's going to have to decide if they want to try to sustain something here or just run the clock out. Gutierrez looking, looking, fires. It is complete. And no gain. Angel Nava Esparza getting ready for the cattle call, just grabbed him around the shoulders and slammed him into the ground. A second completed pass tonight that actually is going, this one, right at the line of scrimmage. Lost by a half yard, but we'll call it for no gain. They did have a negative yard on one of the pass completions. Three of four is Gutierrez, but as we mentioned, two of those three passes have been from negative or right at the line of scrimmage. One of the things about this Wildcat team, they can pass. And that has not always been the case. Gutierrez with an empty backfield, looking downfield. He'll keep it and cuts up field, and he'll be dropped at about the 24-yard line. Joseph Denton in there along with uh, Jonathan Medina. And it's a pickup of 
five. It'll be third and five. Clock continues to run as we're under a minute 30 to go. Brawley always huddling up. That's just their style. Coach Self believes in that. And as we've mentioned, uh, 71 times of the 100 games he's coached at Brawley, he's been successful. Look at the splits on the offensive line there, John. Big wide splits. Dropping the ball on the shotgun snap and then dumping it off to Craig Baum. And Craig Baum is dropped for another loss. Again, it's a completion with a three-yard loss. And timeout Central to stop the clock. Central will take the timeout. A minute and two seconds to play in the first half. It'll be fourth and about seven for the Wildcats when we come back. Day in and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always come first. Xavier Pereira will know it is Craig Bob to do the punting, but uh, the play blown dead before he can uh, get it away. Paradia does most of the punting, but it's Blake Krigbaum standing back, and we did see him punt in the game we did against uh, Brawley Southwest. Yeah, Krigbaum is their emergency kicker, and I know emergency here, but that's got to put some thoughts in central mind for a, fun, a fake. You wouldn't expect that, though, inside your own 20. The left-footed punter gets it away, and it is fair caught at the 46-yard line. Juan Dominguez with the fair catch. It's high school football on KXL. You're listening to high school football on AM 1250 KXL Central and on the World Wide Web at KXLRadio.com. 56 seconds to play in the first half. Yes, Central does have two timeouts, and they're right up on the line of scrimmage with their triple outs to the right, one out to the left. Osuna can fill the night air with footballs. Rolling to his left, looking, dumps it off, and it is caught. Yes, it is caught by Juan Dominguez. Dominguez tippy-toed along the sideline and then went out of bounds, stopping the clock with 51 seconds. And it is a first down, Dominguez's first catch of the evening. It is spotted on the 33. 12-yard pickup for Dominguez. And you are already very close to Berlin Torres' field goal range, if you want to think that way. Osuna back to pass, dumps it off, got the man open, and it goes incomplete. Fernando Morales was running stride for stride with the coverage of Damian Reyes. And let's give credit to that rush of the interior line for the Wildcats, that rush that was coming in there from their linemen Omar Chavez and Dominio Santana made Osuna throw it just a split second sooner than he wanted to and that for therefore he wasn't able to make the break to catch the football so as they say close but no cigar second and ten Gomez is standing right beside De Niro Osuna looking firing and in and out of the fingertips of Dominguez Incomplete, brings up third and ten. And so far the clock is down to 42 seconds, so the two previous, three previous plays, one complete, two incomplete, have taken up eight seconds. And as I said, this is just theoretical. It would be a 50-yard field goal attempt. Berlin Torres has a 50-yard foot. Yeah, I'm sure they'd want to get it closer here. It would be tempting, but... Uh, but the, Short time left. Now we're going to get a timeout by the Spartans, leaving them one. Spartans take the timeout. We'll take a timeout. 
with 42 seconds to play in the first half. 21-7, Central Leeds Brawler. Bo and his team of employees at Sands Auto Body are constantly striving on giving you 100% satisfaction on getting your vehicle repaired and fixed right. Stan's Auto Body is grateful from the support that they hear and being rated number one with CarWise.com. Yes, accidents are disturbing, and Stan's Auto Body is here for you. Stan's Auto Body works with all insurance companies. Give them a call or stop by 1880 West Euclid Avenue in El Centro. At Tyler Insurance, we're proud to have served Imperial Valley's businesses and families since 1921. Now as part of Gallagher, we're committed to bringing you the same team and exceptional service with expanded offerings in insurance, risk management, and consulting services. Together, we're dedicated to helping your business and your community face their future with confidence. Visit AJG.com forward slash Tyler to learn more about our new partnership with Gallagher. Your favorite NFL team plays on Imperial Valley's AM 1230, KXOL Centro. Third and ten, Osuna with the snap from the shotgun, looks downfield, got the man open, and incomplete, no flags. Pushing and shoving in the end zone, no flags, it was mutual. And had there been a flag, it could have gone either way, John. No, there, there is a penalty flag. Now, I don't know what the call is, but everybody's moving downfield. We'll see if they've got to try to come they back. They did call pass interference but against Brawley. But that's a spot foul. So yes. they're going to bring it back to the 33-yard line, and that's going to put it all the way down to the 18. Yes. It will be a first down. There were two Brawley defenders, one Spartan receiver. And there was pushing and shoving, and they did call it. Now, Brawley will have to stiffen up here, as they certainly are in field goal range for Berlin Torres. 37 seconds to play in the first half. And that was actually called against the original D-back that was trailing the play. They did have the safety come over, and he knocked the ball away, but he was not called for the pass interference. The defensive back was, which he was beat, so you've got to figure that what he did was save uh, seven points for his team. First and ten. Osuna looks, fires, and off the fingertips of Michael Sullivan. He was open, one just of the, right off the fingertips. One of the few times this year we've seen Sullivan not bring in a ball that was within catchable range. As that time, Brawley blitzed the cornerback, and so Osuna just threw the ball right over him to Sullivan, who was running down the field. The safety was in trail, but uh, the pass just a little bit. Too high, Sullivan got his mitts on it, couldn't bring it in. Second and ten, the ball is on the 18. Yeah, three seconds went off the clock for that play. Osuna from the shotgun, under a big rush, gets away, fires it into the corner of the end zone, and that is pass interference again. The yeah. Brawley defender was beaten, yeah, he and was. he just grabbed the intended receiver, Nathan Torres, just grabbed him yeah. and spun him around. Yeah, he... Torres had his back to the plays. The ball was in the air coming. But, again, it's a spot foul. So you're in the end zone, but uh, it's going to move the ball. Down to the nine-yard yeah. line. It'll be half the distance. Meanwhile, the clock shows 27. And that's and plenty of time. They're only using three or four seconds on these plays. Yeah, so far, also, they have just been a split second away from suffering a sack, as Osuna was able to elude pressure that time. Now this, because it is half the distance of the goal, it is not a first down. So it will repeat second down. It will be second and inches from the nine. They're not worried about the inches. With 27 seconds to play, they're looking for points. And Central can get a first down. It is second and one from the nine-yard line. Osuna, looking, 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 firing it into the corner of the end zone, and it goes incomplete. And Torres again on the coverage. This time the coverage was good. The clock stops with 24 seconds to play. Yes, Central can run a play here if they want to try to change up on Brawley, because if they do get the first down, it is third down and one, then the clock will stop while the chain has to get set. Obviously, just the down marker, so they'd have to hurry up on the play. Do they still have a timeout? They still have a timeout remaining. Okay. Third and inches. 
Looking, 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 firing into the corner of the end zone, and again, incomplete, just missed. The receivers are open. The connection from Osuna to either Sullivan or Morales is just inches off. And now we'll see if this is going to be a big momentum change for Brawley Central sending out the field goal team. And if uh, this is not converted, then Brawley will take into the halftime the fact that they did keep Central out of the end zone here. Medina will hold. 25-yard attempt. Snap back, kick is up, and the kick is good. 16 seconds to play in the first half. It is Central 24 and the Broly Wildcat 7. When you're hungry and you want delicious home-style cooking, there are two locations in the Imperial Valley that have the best. Brownie's Diner, 990 Main Street in Brawley, open seven days a week, 5.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., offering delicious breakfast and lunch entrees, including ribeye steak, liver and onions, and meatloaf every Tuesday. The original town pump in Westmoreland is open 4 p.m. till 9 p.m. They're closed Mondays. Brownie's Diner in Brawley and the original town pump in Westmoreland. Well, that was about a minute and a half that took a half an hour to play, John. But the end result was the Central Spartans put three points on the board. The uh, Spartans, leading 24-7, to will now re kick off. Berlin Torres will do the kicking. And, uh, the uh, again, wind is not an issue tonight. Okay. And uh, Berlin Torres will again kick it most of the way to Holtville. As the uh, Wildcats come out, they'll put it in play first and ten on their own 20-yard line. When you crave Mexican food, are you not sure where to go? I'll give you a suggestion. La Fonda Bar and Grill. Yes, the Camacho family is still doing it right with freshly made Mexican food. From enchiladas to special quesadillas, and everything is handmade. And of course, Miss Camacho, she still comes in to make sure everybody's favorite chili rellanos are there. La Fonda Bar and Grill, 1950 South 4th Street in El Centro, open Wednesday through Monday for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 16 seconds to play in the first half. The Wildcats with the football First and ten on their own 20-yard line. Craig Baum and the fumble on the exchange. And the Wildcats, uh, Gutierrez does fall on it. But the clock continues to run, and that will be the final play of the first half. At the end of one half of football, the Bell Game 2019, the 76th edition of the Bell Game. The Central Spartans with a 24-7 lead. It's the Beauty Fall Flooring Sale now until November 30th. Dermis Floor Covering is offering 24 months special financing on Shaw Floors, Anderson Tough Decks, and Cortec Flooring. Whether you need carpet, hardwood, vinyl, or something to withstand pets, kids, or water, rest assured there's flooring that's just right for your lifestyle on approved credit. Visit Dermis Flooring at 220 North J Street in Imperial. No matter what you need to keep your home cool and comfortable, RK Air Conditioning has it. From complete Temp Star cooling systems to the latest in Wi Fi capable thermostats, we have everything you need to stay comfortable. That's why you should make RK Air Conditioning your first and only call for your cooling needs. Call 760 353 7570 or find us online at rkair.net. Temp Star, quality you can feel. Flautas y sopes, delicious authentic Mexican food, just $6.49 for a dozen flautas. Combo meals for any appetite, with three locations in the valley, 715 Cesar Chavez Boulevard in Calexico, 1531 Ford Drive next to Foods for Less in El Centro, and 1622 South 4th Street next to Soul Market in El Centro. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Sundays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in Calexico, and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. in El Centro. Don't forget, you can go online for our menu and call in your order ahead of time. Flautas y sopes, the real deal. The CB Stop, located at the corner of Cole and Bowker Road in Calexico, is your one-stop location for ice-cold beer, wine, and your favorite beverages. They have a selection of sandwiches, chips, snacks, ice. You can even get fishing bait and a fishing license. The CB Stop has it all, along with a gas station with diesel and a car wash. Open 24 hours a day. The CB Stop, located in Calexico at the corner of Cole and Bowker Road. It's high school football. I'm Carol Buckley. With me in the booth, John Driffle. 
Our producer engineer is Gabe Lemus. Technical assistance provided by Kurt Huffman. The uh, halftime score, Central leads the Burley Wildcats 24-7. The, uh, the Wildcats, on the very first play from scrimmage, handed the ball to Blake Krigbaum and the five foot six, 185 185-pound cannonball rolled 75 yards for the touchdown. The uh, Wildcats jumping ahead 7-0 and uh, looked like, hey, things are, are going to you know, work out well. Since then, Craigbaum, who is their featured running back, has had some difficulties getting underway, and that is mostly due to the Spartan defense. We'll recap some of the Spartan scoring before we get to the halftime numbers after this. Hi, this is Julie Oliver, as your local Allstate agent, providing protection that fits your life. I am committed to learning about your needs and personalizing protection to meet them. Contact me at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Zero, zero. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability, life insurance offered through Allstate Life Insurance Company and Allstate Assurance Company, Northbrook, Illinois, and American Heritage Life Insurance Company, Jacksonville, Start the day off right by having breakfast at Broken Milk Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in the Imperial Valley by our customers. Thank you. Remember, Broken Yolk strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yolk Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yolk Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. John Driffle, uh, the first half. Well, the Broly Wildcats having some issues getting an offense underway after their very first play of the game. The uh, Central Spartans have been able to run the football. They've been able to uh, complete some passes, even though a good percentage of their passes have been missed it by that much, boss, right? Yeah, the stats show the game. Central really has dominated, so Brawley has equipped themselves well to still be within the game. Now, unfortunately for the Wildcats, Central will also be receiving the second half kick. So let's see if Brawley, in a sense of desperation, tries some kind of onside or pooch kick or something, trying to get the ball back. But uh, you take away the 75-yard run on the first play of scrimmage from Craig Bond, and we've seen that before at Southwest. But if you take that one run away, then Brawley would have right now a total of 31 yards. So they've got 106 total yards, 75 on one play. But let's look exactly what they've done. 17 carries for 101. That's after averaging 75 yards to carry on that first attempt. Ended up with 17 for 101. So that's about five, a little bit better than five per attempt. Four for five was the freshman Gutierrez, but unfortunately for him, it's only for a total of five yards because one of those catches was at the line of scrimmage for no gain, and another was actually three yards behind the line of scrimmage, and the third was one yard behind the line of scrimmage. So he had three of his four completed passes went for no, went for negative or no gain, and you factor in the nine yards on the one completed pass across the line of scrimmage, Take away the other four yards. He only has five total passing yards, giving Brawley 106 total yards in the first half. They do have five first downs. Gutierrez did have one huge fumble. Nava, as far as showing his senior leadership ability, his toughness, and his desire to win a bell game for the third straight year, right after that big touchdown run by the Wildcats' Craig Baum, Nava Sparsa wrapped up the freshman quarterback, Gutierrez, stripped the ball from him and turned around and ran it in for a touchdown to tie the game up. So that's the big turnover from Brawley, the only turnover of the game. No interceptions for the super freshman, Gutierrez, being four for five, but again, only five total yards. We'll be back to take a look and see what Central's done after this. McNeese Smart is your one-stop convenience store with everything you need to get you through your day. Fill your tank with V-Power from Shell and then visit the deli for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Choose your favorite deli sandwich or hot stuff pizza. Or be the office for your next party with their giant 52-inch pizza. Daily specials on selected foot-long subs for only $6. Yes, McNeese Smart is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Dogwood and Main Street in El Centro. 
I don't worry anymore about getting stranded with my car breaking down. Why is that? That automotive class I took at Imperial Valley College not only prepared me to fix my own car, it also prepared me for a new career in automotive repair. I like the way you think. I've always wanted to become a welder. Then check out these and other IVC career education classes at imperial.edu. Day in and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always come first. Well, welcome back to halftime at the 76th annual Bell Game, where the Central Spartans are leading the Brawley Wildcats 24 to 7. Except for that opening play that we've already mentioned several times, Greg Bog running 75 yards. Central has actually dominated both sides of the football and the kicking game, as when Central is punted, their punter is averaging more than 45 yards a kick, and he has kicked off five times tonight, and that has resulted in five touchbacks. And if that's not enough, he also added a 25-yard field goal with about 15 seconds to go on the first half. So with that said, let's look and see what Central has done with the stats. They have 12 rushes for 60 yards. That's 5 r yards per attempt. 7 for 17 is Danero Suna for 105 yards. So obviously the star of the game on the offensive side for the Spartans. And uh, he should have even better numbers than that, Carol, as we saw several balls. When we say several, not one or two. There was probably four or five balls that should have been caught. That weren't. Uh, remember, these are high school kids out there. So as soon as 7 for 17, 105 yards, giving Central a very respectable 165 total yards compared to Brawley's 106. Central had nine first downs in that first half, but just as important as everything else, no turnovers, no fumbles, no interceptions. We'll be back to take a look at the individual stats after this. Bo and his team of employees at Stan's Auto Body are constantly striving on giving you 100% satisfaction on getting your vehicle repaired and fixed right. Stan's Auto Body is grateful from the support that they hear and being rated number one with CarWise.com. Yes, accidents are disturbing, and Stan's Auto Body is here for you. Stan's Auto Body works with all insurance companies. Give them a call or stop by 1880 West Euclid Avenue in El Centro. When you're hungry and you want delicious home-style cooking, there are two locations in the Imperial Valley that have the best. Brownie's Diner, 990 Main Street in Brawley, open seven days a week, 5.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., offering delicious breakfast and lunch entrees, including ribeye steak, liver and onions, and meatloaf every Tuesday. The original town pump in Westmoreland is open 4 p.m. till 9 p.m. They're closed Mondays. Brownie's Diner in Brawley and the original town pump in Westmoreland. Welcome back to Cal Jones Field on the campus of Century Union High School in El Centro, California. We're at the half in the 76th annual Bell Game. Central is leading the visiting Raleigh Wildcats 24 to 7. We mentioned that Raleigh has 106 total yards, 101 rushing, 5 passing. Central has 165 total yards, 60 rushing, 105 passing. Let's go ahead and see how they got all of those yards. The rushing yards are split, spread out among six different ball carriers for Central. First, we need to mention super sophomore Marcos Moore, who has a run for six yards. And we'll be back with uh, Marcos's name. He also had a couple catches, but one carry for six yards. Also, Fernando Morales had one carry for four yards. Danero Suda was flushed out of the pocket, and he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. One carry for no gain. Carlos Gomez making his presence felt, getting four rushes for 30 yards. And also, Jonathan Medina, as always, two carries, four yards, Mr. Steady. And, uh, they, of course, rushing the football, whenever the Spartans seem to get inside the 10-yard line, it's Navis Barca. He has four carries for 16 yards, two touchdowns. One was the fumble that he stripped from Gutierrez, the quarterback, and ran it for a touchdown. And the other was a straight touchdown run on the blast play. The seven completed passes are spread out among five different receivers for the Central Spartans. Juan Dominguez has one catch for 12 yards. The aforementioned Marcus Moore has two catches for 21 yards. Fernando Morales, one catch for 10 yards. As always, uh, steady Michael Sullivan, two catches, 42 yards. And with a little trickeration, as they say, Brian Martin. 
First time we've seen him on the offensive side of the ball. Got a 20-yard touchdown reception that was totally fooled the Brawley Wildcats. He was all by himself. All Brian had to do was catch the football at the 10. Being a baseball player on the varsity as a sophomore, no trouble catching it. And all he had to do was keep from falling down from the time he caught it to the 10 yards to complete the 20-yard touchdown pass. So Central, 165 total yards, 106 for Brawley. Central will receive the second-half kick. We'll be back with more after this. Well, John, we'll be back, but uh, before we come back, uh, we've got uh, a special guest in the uh, in the booth with us, and uh, he's making the rounds of the various and sundry broadcast uh, booths tonight. Am I on the payroll? Yeah, you're well. <laughs> talk to Mario about that, okay? The uh, only in the Imperial Valley. There's four different broadcasts of this uh-huh. game. And, you know, it's high school football in the Imperial Valley. Coach Steve Cato, coach, teacher, athletic director, retired for, what, the fifth time now? And Grandpa. And I'm Grandpa. Grandpa. I've got seven grandkids now, and they're all coming to Brawley. Okay. They're all Wildcats. Now, I know Carrie, right? Yep. Okay, and how many? Well, Carrie's got her daughter, Cheyenne Taylor, and then they have three. And then um, Lindsay and Kurt. That's Reuben. Good. Kurt Reuben, uh, you remember him? Who? Kurt Reuben. Uh, there's some uh, quick good story th- you'll appreciate. I got in all sorts of trouble when Kurt was a senior. Uh-huh. I said Kurt was the best high school football player in the Valley. I think you're right. You remember who was playing in Imperial at the time? Was it Robert Thomas? Oh, yeah. yeah and I said, well, don't I, what, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. Kurt, running back. Linebacker, rover back, monster back, place kicker, punter, yeah, he could do carried it all. the water bucket. He, he was could in catch balls. He could. Yes. He was a hitter. Yes. Yeah. I, and, and, I see, and my grandkids, I see it. Okay. It's coming. They're Reed Rubin. Okay. Luca Rubin. I'm, and then the twins, Nixon and Ella. Watch out. But, They're but, coming. You know, I got in trouble. I said, no. I said, best high school uh, football player. I said, Kurt. He what, played D2 uh, football? Yeah, Cal Poly, uh, okay. San Luis. I said, but, you know, uh-huh. I'm not taking anything away from Robert Thomas. Yeah. Anyway, uh-huh. I should not should not have brought that uh-huh. up other than I love the way Kurt played the game. And he played for my buddy, uh, Bob Toledo. Okay. Uh, yeah, my teammate at San Francisco State. Okay. Uh, how, ma- how many Bell games have you seen? Oh, I you were know. I started. Lot, I started watching Bell games in '58 when um, uh, Dial uh, Ray Dial was a quarterback. He went to uh, the Naval Academy. Little short quarterback, but Let's anyway, have to go there with that, the short, That's a long okay. time ago. You and I look. And, you know, look each other in the eye. I eyes. love short people. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you've coached a couple. And then I wanted to say also, Justin Hannon, who's helped a lot of kids get scholarships. Justin is uh, my son-in-law. He's married to my daughter, Erin. They have three kids, Madden, Kingston, and brand new London. Okay. She's a beauty. Okay. And I got this song that I wrote for him. You don't mind if I sing a Brawley song? Eleven little wildcats sing in the blues. They all play football better than you. They practice and they practice and they practice to win. To win that game like nobody can. Da 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 Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay. My, my wife will, if she's listening. Well, she's... I'll tell you. A, we're live on the air, we're live on the internet, and as soon as the game is over, you can go back and listen to the podcast on the internet and make sure the grandkids hear it. But you've actually coached a couple of these, haven't you? Yes, I have. Cal Jones owned me. Yeah, he was a You are, a you are on coach. a long list yeah. for that one. Right, he's a good and man. What, right. what we have seen with... With uh, Coach Pena, yes, he has brought back yes. a lot of that feel, even though he is a wildcat. Yes, he, he was my ball boy when he was okay. growing up. His grandpa asked me to if he could ride on the bus, and I said, "Yeah, sure." And we've been close ever since. I okay. used to 
He has... He's good people. Good stock. You feel the difference on campus yes. with what he has brought, and it permeates. So you get all the credit because you were obviously the early the uh -huh. uh, early influence when he was your ball boy, right? Yep. So I it's, all, it's so. all your credit. <laughs> uh, he's good people. What did you see in the first half of this game? Well, the momentum sure did turn <laughs> quick, huh? Yeah, when uh, Brawley got that long score from Craig Baum there, that was a big hole, too. Ooh. Man, and I didn't know he could run that You fast. and I could have made it through that hole. Yeah, well, I used to be able to yes. make it through those holes like that. Now, that was, what? I, I played in 62 and 63 in the, on the varsity. Okay. So. See, the, uh, what amazes me is this kid's 185, 190 pounds, and he outran the safeties. Right. Yeah, you know, short little legs. I, it's tough to do that, you I, know. I love looking at short people yes. do stuff like scrolls and yes. uh, you know, a whole bunch of them. Altuve. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yes. What do you do if you're uh, Raleigh coaching? Don't. Coaching in the second half. What adjustments? Well, get their heads up first. You know, they're, they're hanging their head low. Uh, they're only down 14, right? 17. Oh, 17. I, I don't count too good, but yeah, it's uh, it can get it can happen. Yes. Just uh, get get uh, some offense going, get some stops, you know, adjust your defense. Whatever he's gonna do, I'm not gonna tell him what to do, but he he he'll You've make been some there. adjustments. You understand? Yeah. yeah. And he's doing this with a freshman quarterback. Yeah. Yes. And something that he has brought. That we have not seen from Brawley in years is he's got a passing game. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And you know more than just dumping it off to a tight end. Right. You so. just need, give him a little more time, and and I, you guys want want to get going here? No, you're good. Ready? You're I'm good. good. They won't start until I tell them to. You want me to sing that song again? No. no? Okay. John, we're <laughs> ready for you, John. <laughs> Coach right. Steve well, Cato, we do appreciate me. the visit. Okay. Congratulations thank you. on the new grand. Sell some, sell some more ads. Okay, Coach Steve Cato and um, you know, Coach coached at Brawley, coached in Holtville, coached a lot of other places. At Tyler Insurance, we're proud to have served Imperial Valley's businesses and families since 1921. Now as part of Gallagher, we're committed to bringing you the same team and exceptional service with expanded offerings in insurance, risk management, and consulting services. Together, we're dedicated to helping your business and your community face their future with confidence. Visit AJG.com forward slash Tyler to learn more about our new partnership with Gallagher. When you crave Mexican food, are you not sure where to go? I'll give you a suggestion. La Fonda Bar and Grill. Yes, the Camacho family is still doing it right with freshly made Mexican food. From enchiladas to special quesadillas and everything is handmade. And of course, Miss Camacho, she still comes in to make sure everybody's favorite chili rianos are there. La Fonda Bar and Grill. 1950 South 4th Street in El Centro. Open Wednesday through Monday for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Travis Gray leads the uh, Spartans out onto the field for the second half. He's aboard a, a beautiful paint pony. Oh, that is a beautiful horse. Um, some other scores around the valley, John. Vincent leads Mountain Empire, and that is 35-7. That is at the half. And, and that it, means Vincent will retain their number one seeding in Division 5. They should. Southwest 14, Calexico 14. That is a second quarter score. Imperial 14, Palo Verde 6 second quarter, and Hopeville defeated Calipat last night 42 to nothing. That was the Axe game, I believe, wasn't it? That was the Axe game in Calipat. And uh, you heard what, co what Coach Steve Cato said. He said, first thing is get these guys to get their heads back up. Yeah, and that's... They're only trailing by 17. Right, plus he noticed that. The body language is evident. We're sitting here across the way, but once again, when you build up tremendous amount of pressure for the quote bell game unquote then these kids they're they're 16 17 years old and it's hard to deal with that much disappointment in that short of time they went from the penthouse to the outhouse in literally three or four minutes running the first play for a touchdown and all of a sudden their quarterback getting stripped and the other guy running the other way so uh, it, it, it's tough we give coach self credit they go ahead and certainly make adjustments 
I've already mentioned, Carol, this second half kickoff is going to be important and possibly exciting. We'll see if uh, Coach Self decides to pick out one of his uh, trick plays from deep in the playbook to try to keep the ball instead of kicking it away to the Spartans. Obviously, the only time Brawley kicked off was after that one-play scoring drive, and they did kick it deep into the end zone for a touchback. Perea has that ability, much like um, Berlin Torres does. Perea approaches the ball, gets his left foot into it. It is a kick that will bounce at the 5, and that's where it's picked up. Across the 15 to the 20, finds a slot across the far sideline and out across the 30 to about the 35-yard line. Yeah, nothing On could have been the return. worse. Nothing could have been worse for the Wildcats side, Carol. You kick the ball deep. You figured either they're going to let it go in the end zone or you're going to trap them back maybe even inside the 20. Excellent return all the way out to the 35-yard line. Fernando Morales on the return. It'll be first and 10 Spartans on their own 35-yard line. Right up on the line of scrimmage, but all these Spartans making contributions tonight. Fernando Morales, what a return. De Niro Osuna from the pistol. Hands off, first back through across the 40. Out to the 50, stays on his feet across the 45, to the 40, to the 30, the 20. Gomez down to the 15-yard line. Carol, we've got to point out a great block on Kilbon. He had a, the sights lined up at the 40-yard line. He was going to take him down. I don't see a flag, but I do see John Seaman walking over. Um, they're at the 30-yard line. The ball was all the way down to the 15. Again, I still I don't see a flag on the field. I don't know what Seaman is talking about. The head it official. may have been the Spartans were a little bit close to the uh, to the sideline, but no warning or anything else. And who was that on the ball, Kerry Carroll? That was Gomez. It is first and ten. Spartans on the Wildcat 15. It is Gomez in the middle, same play. Gomez down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Carlos Gomez. Down to the 9. It'll be first and 10. Spotted on the 8. First, I rather second and about 5. Gomez, the single setback, now stands beside De Niro Osuna. Osuna back to pass, looks, fires it into the corner of the end zone. Nobody got there. It'll go incomplete. It'll be third and five. Yeah, Central picking up right where they left off at the end of the second quarter, deep in Brawley territory, throwing the ball in the end zone and miscommunication. Receivers going one way, the ball going the other. Carter. Third and five, spotted on the eight. Angel Nava Esparza with the football. Nava Esparza down inside the five to about the three. It'll be very close. It is a first down. It'll be first and goal from the three. And as we've seen all year, Nava Esparza right up on the line of scrimmage. Nava Esparza getting the ball, and he carries it in the end zone. Touchdown, Angel Nava Esparza. So just the worst thing that could happen to Brawley to start this second half, a very short drive. You'll recap it, only five plays, and Central now takes a commanding lead. Well, Carlos Gomez did most of the heavy lifting. 50-yard run, and then another one followed up by five-yard run. Angel Navas Barza gets the score. His so third of the evening. Point after attempt. Snap back, kick up. The kick is good. 10-51 to play in the third quarter. And it is Central 31, Brawley 7. It's the Beauty Fall Flooring Sale now until November 30th. Dermis Floor Covering is offering 24 months special financing on Shaw Floors, Anderson Tough Decks, and Cortec Flooring. Whether you need carpet, hardwood, vinyl, or something to withstand pets, kids, or water, rest assured there's flooring that's just right for your lifestyle on approved credit. Visit Dermis Flooring at 220 North J Street in Imperial. 
and you're listening to High School Football on AM 1230 KXOL Centro and on the World Wide Web at KXORadio.com. Exciting high school football, the Bell Game, 76th edition from Cal Jones Field on the campus of Central Union High School in El Centro, California. Jose Berlin Torres will approach the ball and kick it deep through the goal post. And it'll be first and ten. Wildcats on their own 20-yard line. No matter what you need to keep your home cool and comfortable, r k Air Conditioning has it. From complete temp star cooling systems to the latest in Wi-Fi capable thermostats, we have everything you need to stay comfortable. That's why you should make r k Air Conditioning your first and only call for your cooling needs. Call 760-353-7570 or find us online at rkair.net. Temp star, quality you can feel. Well, exactly what you did not want to happen, if you're a Wildcat, is what happened. And the Spartans with a long, field-wise long, time-wise short scoring drive. Gutierrez from the shotgun. Gutierrez back to pass, looking, 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 fires. It is complete and stopped almost immediately. The completion good for two yards, and Fernando Morales made the the, uh, stop, the catch. Well, that was Jesse James Gutierrez. And I'm not sure if he is any relation to the quarterback, Ethan Gutierrez, but I believe he is. I believe they are brothers, siblings. Carol, obviously Gutierrez with the six pass attempts has only thrown the ball about uh, a yard or two across the line of scrimmage, if not behind it. Let's see if Central decides to try to get a jump on one of those and get a pick. It is second and eight. Again, shotgun. Craig Baum goes in motion to the right side, looking downfield, and getting hit from behind and sacked is Gutierrez. And we have on, a the, whistle. on the sack... Time out, Raleigh, Carol. On the sack was Zeke Osuna. Does that name sound familiar? Well, yeah, that is De Niro's cousin. And Raleigh will take a timeout with 9.48 to play in the third quarter. They trail 31 to 7. Flautas y sopes, delicious authentic Mexican food. Just six forty nine for a dozen flautas. Combo meals for any appetite. With three locations in the valley: seven fifteen Caesar Chavez Boulevard in Calexico, fifteen thirty one Ford Drive next to Foods for Less in El Centro, and sixteen twenty two South Fourth Street next to Soul Market in El Centro. Open Monday through Saturday, nine a.m. to nine p.m. Sundays, eight a.m. to eight p.m. in Calexico, and nine a.m. to nine p.m. in El Centro. Don't forget, you can go online for our menu and call in your order ahead of time. Flautas y sopes, the real deal. Well, the Central Spartans' tough defense and the offense that has so far put up 31 points has put the Brawley Wildcats in a position they do not want to be in. They're having to throw the ball. They can throw the ball. They have not had a whole lot of success with that tonight. Usually their success comes with play action passes when the defense is not expecting you to throw it. Shotgun again. In motion goes Craig Baum again. Back to pass. Gutierrez fires deep downfield, and it is almost picked off. And the only reason it wasn't picked off is Jesse James Gutierrez batted it away. He couldn't catch it, but he could keep the Spartan defender from catching it. Excellent play by the defensive player down there, as that time Gutierrez did show he's got an arm. He let it out. Longest pass attempt of the evening for the Wildcats, and I can also see why they don't want to do those deep drops. Uh, Raleigh has a hard time containing the central rush. Fourth and ten, Krigbaum, left-footed punter, gets it away, and it's muffed, and the Spartans are able to cover it. And now a flag, and this will go against the Wildcats. Yeah, the wheels are really coming off now as the player... Muffed it, then fell right on top of it, and a Brawley player then fell on top of the central player. And started punching at the football yeah, when, when it was well covered. Yeah, when you're laying down on top of the football, you can't pile on. That's what they used to call back in our time, piling on. So, But before we make the determination, let's wait 
and let head referee John Seaman show us what the call is. And the call is personal foul against the Wildcats. It would have been first and ten Spartans on the 45-yard line of the Wildcats. Now it's first and ten from the Wildcats, 30. You don't need to give Central a short field. Yeah, when it rains, it pours. And let's see if Central, with the killer instinct, can go for the jugular right here. We might see Osuna try to put the ball in the end zone. Well, the Spartans... Don't you know, need to. They can give the ball to Gomez. Keep giving it to Gomez. You don't even need to go to Medina or Nava Esparza. And we have a timeout in the field, not uh, a timeout taken the away either side. Timeout. Um, Coach, uh, Coach John Seaman is talking to Coach Self of Raleigh across the way, uh, explaining exactly what happened, but it's, it's obvious. Coach Self knows. He's just trying to give his team a chance to catch their collective breast. Now we're ready to play. First and ten, Spartans on the Wildcat 30-yard line after the muff punt that the Spartans were able to cover on their own. It is Gomez. Gomez goes off that right tackle slot again down to the 25-yard line. It's a pickup of five. So Gomez getting the bulk of the carries here. He comes out now, and Nava Esparza goes in. Let's see if Danny Alicorn, the offensive coordinator, saw what I saw. Brawley has all 11 players on the line of scrimmage. And it is Nava Esparza with a stiff arm and then runs over a Wildcat as he carries down to about the 22-yard line. And it'll be about a yard short of the first down. It'll be third and one. This Eight is to four. usually Nava Esparza. Action right here again. Brawley, all 11 players right on the line of scrimmage. Nava Esparza goes and gets it down to the 20. That's good for the first down. Move the chains. And it'll be first and 10 just inside the 20. Now we see those wholesale subs again, Carol, and I believe what Coach Pena has promised. He's promised these kids a chance to get some action. And right now you've got first and 10. You're leading 31 to 7, so he's got wholesale changes. He's got a different package in. Gomez, single setback, back to pass. Osuna, rushed, rushed. He's chased and dropped. He'll be sacked back at the 33 yard line. And I'm sorry, when I'm trailing 31 to 7 and I sack the quarterback, I don't do a sack dance. Well, that, that's fine. They did make a big play for their. Defense, we've already mentioned the wholesale changes, which includes on the line. So Central May thought about calling something a little quicker, just a quick out pass. Let's see what they do after that big sack on Osuna. Second and 22. Osuna back to pass, has some time, lofts it downfield, intended for Sullivan incomplete. Again, a little bit tall. The vaunted Spartan passing attack tonight has not been spot on. Right now, 7 for 19. We did mention in the first half there were several drops, but also those drops kind of uh, cost Asuna some confidence as he's thrown some balls now that uh, have been a little bit uncatchable. It is third and 22. Osuna back to pass, has some time, looks, dumps it off, and it goes incomplete. That Intended would, for Sullivan would crossing. Not would not have been enough for the first down. Sullivan had his player beat, but there were several Wildcats down there that probably would have brought him down. But it would have been near the 20, which would have probably set up another field goal attempt. We're going to see a punt here. It is fourth and 20, spotted on the 31-yard line. Will it be a punt? And it's a little pooch punt. It'll bounce at the 15, roll down inside the 10, and be downed at about the 5-yard line. Probably will put it in play first and 10 on their own 5-yard line. The CB Stop, located at the corner of Coal and Bowker Road in Calexico, is your one-stop location for ice-cold beer, wine, and your favorite beverages. They have a selection of sandwiches, chips, snacks, ice. You can even get fishing bait and a fishing license. The CB Stop has it all, along with a gas station with diesel and a car wash. Open 24 hours a day. The CB Stop, located in Calexico at the corner of Coal and The 
Wildcats break the huddle. It is first and ten. They have the ball on their own, we'll call it the seven-yard line. Gutierrez from the shotgun takes the, the snap, hands off to Craig Baum, and Craig Baum will get, he doesn't really get anything, does he, John? Looks like they're going to put him for a one-yard loss. And Carol, let me editorialize a little bit after a father in the stands is going to say, what are you doing putting all those other kids in? You're dominating the game as we have time out on the field, so I'll have to complete that thought. Go ahead, John. Complete it. Well, he's thinking, what are you doing letting all those kids play right now? But that's exactly why Coach Pena is so well-loved by these kids. He tells them something. He follows through with it, promised them they could play, not when it's, you know, three seconds to go, go out there and kneel down with the quarterback kind of thing, a real action play where they're actually trying to run something. And because of that, these kids will run through walls for them. They'll play that extra toughness. They'll show up practice Monday knowing they're a part of the team. As we don't have a taken timeout, we have an injured player on the field. We see him now for Brawley. He's uh, right there at the line of scrimmage. So hopefully he'll be um, tended to quickly and he'll be back in the game, be able to continue playing. But that's the thought that I was thinking about Coach Pena with. Again, you'd wonder why would you send out all these second and third team players when you're dominating the game, get a touchdown, et cetera, et cetera. But Coach Pena, you know, it's more than just the score on the scoreboard. He's trying to build young men for the future, as is John Self across the way, Kara Laguerra. All the coaches here in the Valley do a great job of that. Southwest leads Calexico 21-14. And that uh, both teams pretty much out of it as far as the playoff picture. Southwest would have a very outside chance. But it's good to see a competitive game. Collectors only beaten Calipat this year, and Southwest has just beaten Newman Kofa. Second and 11. Under center in the handoff, and it is handed off to Damian Reyes, and Reyes will get it out to about the six-yard line. It looks like they're going to call him right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. No gain. Yeah. So it is third and 11. And we've commented all season long the Central Spartans have excellent team speed, and that was evident right there. As Reyes looked like he could turn the corner and take off running, barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Clock continues to move by the time this ball is snapped and the play is completed. It'll be about six minutes halfway through the third quarter. Brawley not in any real hurry from the shotgun. And keeping it and getting tackled back near the goal line, very close to a safety, was Gutierrez. Yeah, that was On that read option, he kept it, and he's dropped it to one. Yeah, didn't want to give it to Craig Baum because Central had smelled that play out. So he kept it and spun, and he spun right into the arms of Osuna. Uh, also, Denton was out there. So now Brawley's kicking from deep in his own end zone, any kind of poor snap here, and you could have a safety or some kind of block punt. Just an 11-yard drop because the ball is on the one. Snap back, Craig Baum, the left-footed punter. Uh, it's like it's in a chimney, straight up, but then it does take a Brawley bounce, and it'll be down at the 30, at the 27-yard line. It'll be first and ten central on their own 20s on the Wildcat 27-yard line. The uh, Brawley punting game has not helped them any. Yeah, that's one of the big differences tonight, of course, has been the kicking game. Field goal for central, a 45-yard average for punts. Six kickoffs into the end zone for touchbacks. Osuna will hand off, and it is Gomez. Gomez down to about the 23-yard line. Four-yard nope, pickup. It, Angel Nava Esparza. That's a good four-yard pickup for Nava Esparza. And Carol Craigbaum was playing right outside linebacker. He came all the way across the field and followed through the hole to make that tackle. And handoff again, right up the gut, and staying on his feet and pushing his way down to about the 
15-yard line, and now a scrum breaks out, and flags fly all over the place. Yeah, this is going to go pushing against, and shoving. against Central was the one that pushed right in front of, and we may have an ejection here. The JV game had a couple ejections Wednesday, and, yeah, they were certainly beating up on the ball carrier novice Parson, but that doesn't give you the right to start pushing and shoving back. Especially when you've got a 31 to 7 lead. There's timeout on the field. We'll sort it out. There's an injured Wildcat on the field as well. We've got 4.45 to play in the third quarter. It is 31-7, Central Leeds Brawling. When you crave Mexican food, are you not sure where to go? I'll give you a suggestion. La Fonda Bar and Grill. Yes, the Camacho family is still doing it right with freshly made Mexican food. From enchiladas to special quesadillas and everything is handmade. And of course, Miss Camacho, she still comes in to make sure everybody's favorite chili rianos are there. La Fonda Bar and Grill. 1950 South 4th Street in El Centro. Open Wednesday through Monday for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's high school football. The officials are conferring, and there are multiple flags, and it will be an unsportsmanlike conduct, at least one of them. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Spartans, and that will move the ball back to about the 33-yard line. Did not see any signals for ejection. And that's something that you go bare, you tread lightly in that area as an official. And Carol, we're going to have an interesting situation here because they made the first down, so the penalty was actually a dead ball foul. So it's going to be first and 10 all the way back on the 33 yard line. So that's where you get a first down and lose 10 yards. Clock winds, Spartans. Come out. Gomez with the football. Gomez down to the 30. He'll pick up about three. Bring up a second and seven. We mentioned Osuna seven for 19 on the evening. Now seven for 20. Perhaps we're going to go ahead and see Central run the football the remaining four and a half minutes here in the third quarter and on into the fourth quarter. Vincent leads Mountain Empire 42 to seven. There is a running clock there. High snap, but it's brought down and handed off to Gomez. Gomez breaks a tackle. He's at the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Carlos Gomez. No flags. So Gomez takes it in from 21, 31 yards out, rather. A 31-yard touchdown run. And that will make it. If they complete the point after, snap low, but it's picked up and it is no good with uh, 4.11 to play in the third quarter. It is Central 37, Brawley 7. As Tyler Insurance, we're proud to have served in Carroll Valley's businesses and families since 1921. Now as part of Gallagher, we're committed to bringing you the same team and exceptional service with expanded offerings in insurance, risk management, and consulting services. Together, we're dedicated to helping your business and your community face their future with confidence. Visit AJG.com forward slash Tyler to learn more about our new partnership with Gallagher. AM 1230 KXO El Centro. And we're also on the web at kxoradio.com. It is the Spartans set to kick off. And every one of the kickoffs tonight have been into the end zone for a touchback. Berlin Torres gets the big foot into it. And it is muffed in the end zone. Will Torres has trouble hanging on to the ball. It'll be first and ten for the uh, Wildcats on their own 20-yard line. 
It's the Beauty Fall Flooring Sale now until November 30th. Dermis Floor Covering is offering 24 months special financing on Shaw Floors, Anderson Tough Decks, and Cortec Flooring. Whether you need carpet, hardwood, vinyl, or something to withstand pets, kids, or water, rest assured there's flooring that's just right for your lifestyle on approved credit. Visit Dermis Flooring at 220 North J Street in Imperial. 410 to play in the third quarter. Central leads 37 to 7. Wildcats have it first and ten on their own 20-yard line. Triple wide out to the right again, one out to the left. From the shotgun, Gutierrez back, looking, looking, looking. He loses the football, and who's got it? He brought his arm back to throw the pass, and the ball just fell out of his hand. Yeah, he was trying to keep from throwing it. Raleigh did retain possession, but he saw that the central defensive cornerback was out here, and he was going to be in the lane to get the pick, so he tried to stop his forward motion with the football, and it just slipped right out of his hand, but he gets credited with an eight-yard sack. It, I have not seen that. I mean, it literally, as he brought his hand back, it fell out. Yeah, he, he was holding up. He was going to fire it, and then he just stopped, and that's the ball just slipped out like a bar of soap. But the important part now is you've got second and about uh, 18. Second and 18, the ball on the 12. Back to pass. Gutierrez looking, looking, looking. Fires downfield. Got the man open, and it's a little bit overthrown for Joe Morillo. Morillo, with a double move on Fernando Morales, got open, and the ball just... Overthrown. Excellent play by Murillo. He carried out his spot. Gutierrez let it go. Was not pressured. Good blocking by the Brawley defense. Does stop the clock. Was that today, O'Campbell, that just walked through? I'm sorry. I was looking out the okay. field. But this is homecoming. I did see, um, well, it's not actually a homecoming game, but Bell game brings them all out. I did see Gerald Robinson before the game. Carol sitting right down here in front of us. G. Rob. Third down. Third and 18. Central back in a prevent defense. Two safeties back on the 30-yard line. Back to pass, looking downfield. Nothing downfield, trying to get away. Dumps it off over the middle, incomplete to Morillo behind him. But to Gutierrez was under intense pressure. So to bring up fourth and 18, spotted on the 12. The Wildcats, after that first 75-yard touchdown run by Craigbaum, have had issues getting the ball underway. Well, they have negative 16 yards rushing this half, Carroll, and a negative 14 yards total. They did have one completed pass and four attempts for two yards. Now we have another whistle. Timeout, Brawley. That's their second timeout. 3.13 to play in the third quarter. It is Central 37. And Brawley 7. No matter what you need to keep your home cool and comfortable, R&K Air Conditioning has it. From complete temp star cooling systems to the latest in Wi-Fi capable thermostats, we have everything you need to stay comfortable. That's why you should make R&K Air Conditioning your first and only call for your cooling needs. Call 760-353-7570 or find us online at rkair.net. Temp star, quality you can feel. And it is fourth and 18. The Wildcats took that time out. That's their second here in the second half. They are trailing 37 to 7. We anticipate the punt coming up again. The Brawley kicker is in the end zone. I believe it is Gutierrez this time. And nope. It, and it is blocked in the end zone. And it's either a safety or a touchdown. It's either a safety or a touchdown. It is a safety. We have seen everything tonight, John. It is a safety. And that means Brawley's going to have to kick off from their own 20-yard line. Carol's will send going to get the ball right back. It'll be a free kick from the 20. Now let's go back to uh, a game we did, what, 10, 15 years ago, the free kick? Not San Luis. San Luis. (laughs) Elected to punt. They lined up in punt formation. Snapped the ball back to the punter. And the t- to the 10-yard line. Yes. And nobody had ever explained the uh, niceties of that rule to the coach. Yes, yeah, Central needs to get up on the 30-yard line. That's what they're doing now. 
as they'll be free kicking, and let's see if they de- they determine or decide to punt it or to place kick it. Or the, the way they're punting has been, I would assume they will place kick it. I would make that same call. I would definitely give Pareda the chance to kick it as far away as he can. Central, though, is standing. Their deep backs are inside the 35. Pareda will and punt will it on it. the yeah. tee at the 20. You can punt it. You can place kick it. You can drop kick it. But you got to kick it. Only if you're Doug Flutie. And high driving kick. And it's fielded back at about the 25, out to the 30, to the 40, with a block across the 50, stretching out down the sideline with a beautiful return. And on that return, let's give credit to Eric Moreno, the junior. Hey, coach, let me play. Yeah, all the Central Spartans making contributions here. As Central not allowing Brawley a chance to catch their breath, they're right up on the line of scrimmage. The ball is placed on the 37, 38 yard line, it looks like. That's where he went out of bounds. It is. Excuse me, Carol. Central started so many drives in great field position. It's been a nightmare for Brawley. First and ten, the handoff. It is Nava Esparza. He's hit, but then bounces and pushes across. The 35 down to the 34-yard line. Angel Nava Esparza. Yeah, that young man, I've always thought he was the best football player here in the Valley, and he's sure proving that tonight. Imperial leads our, um, Palo Verde 34-7. to seven. No surprise there. And Vincent 42, Mountain Empire 7. Central is huddling up Carroll for one of the few times this year, let alone tonight, as I'm sure we'll see that the rest of the game. Just a run time off the clock. And all 11 Brawley players are within three yards of the football. And it is Nava Esparza again. Nava Esparza across the 30 down to the 29-yard line. And that's good for, it's about a yard short. They spotted on the 30, so it'll be third and two. I did not expect this, John. No, I, was, I did not expect the game to be this wide open. I thought that perhaps either team could win by three touchdowns, maybe just because of their explosiveness with the passing of Brawley this year. But Central has certainly dominated both sides of the ball. Gomez with the handoff. Gomez struggles, pushes, and will get the first down as he carries down to the 26. And spotted on the 25. Carlos Gomez. Sixth third down here in the third quarter, Carol. Meanwhile, Brawley has no first downs. And I've already mentioned they have a total of negative 14 yards here in this third quarter. So you cannot be dominated in any different or any more ways than what Central is doing to a very proud Brawley football team and program tonight. But let's give credit to these Spartan seniors. You know, they have taken the belt the two previous years. They were ready tonight. They know what's going on, and we still have a whole fourth quarter to play. Elias Dominguez in at a slot, and it is Gomez in the middle. Nothing there. He bounces out and is spun down. And on the tackle, J.J. Gutierrez. Not Jesse James, but J.J. Yeah, that will be Carlos Gomez's first rush for negative yards tonight. But as we've mentioned, you have all 11 players right up there in the box. Everybody knows Central's going to run the football. And uh, the Spartans using a good number of substitutes right now. This could be the final play as the clock ticks under 30 seconds here in the third quarter. The handoff and stop, and that that's, okay, that should be his second personal foul tonight. I'm not going to name the player, but that's the second time. Well, unfortunately, Brawley had just tackled Gomez four yards further back in the backfield. That would have been nine straight negative yards, and they had a player, as we've called again, I'm showing up my age here, we call that piling on. The central player's down, and the Brawley player just speared him. And he led with his helmet, and... Unnecessary, and again, I'm not going to call out the player, but 
That was not smart. It's a blow to the head. Now, the interesting thing here is going to be, is that automatic first down? Because I don't believe they have 15 yards to pick up the first down. Personal foul is a first, is an automatic first down. You would think. Let's go ahead and wait, and we'll let the referee show us. Juan Liao steps it off. Juan looks so serious there, John. He's stopping on about the 17-yard line. So the yard to make, they need to get to the, excuse me, stopping on the 19-yard line. They need to get to the 18. Well, no, they're, they're saying now they need to get all the way down to the 14. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, the, the previous first down was on the 24. So they need to get to the 14. The ball's on the 18, and they show second down. So what you said is what I would agree with, but I've seen it before this year. And now um, Benny Carter's coming over to see if we're supposed to be first down or second down. And if it is first down, they're going to have to move the chains. And it's, no, it's going to be second down. So not enough to get the yard to make. The ball's all the way down and to the 18-yard line, end of the third quarter. End of the third quarter, the score at the end of three quarters, Central 39 and Brawley 7. Flautas y sopes, delicious authentic Mexican food. Just six forty nine for a dozen flautas. Combo meals for any appetite with three locations in the valley. 715 Cesar Chavez Boulevard in Calexico. 1531 Ford Drive next to Foods for Less in El Centro. And 1622 South 4th Street next to Soul Market in El Centro. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in Calexico and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. in El Centro. Don't forget, you can go online for our menu and call in your order ahead of time. Flautas y sopes, the Real deal. The CB Stop, located at the corner of Cole and Bowker Road in Calexico, is your one-stop location for ice-cold beer, wine, and your favorite beverages. They have a selection of sandwiches, chips, snacks, ice. You can even get fishing bait and a fishing license. The CB Stop has it all, along with a gas station with diesel and a car wash. Open 24 hours a day. The CB Stop, located in Calexico at the corner of Cole and Bowker Road. Your favorite NFL team plays on Imperial Valley's AM 1230, KXOL Centro. Well, it's an unusual 76th rendition of the uh, Bell game. The Central Spartans are dominating, but we've seen a little bit of everything. Some of it very, very good. Some of it not so good. Uh, including a safety, a one-play, 75-yard touchdown, the very first play of the game. And the handoff, and I'm not sure who that is. That's somebody brand new. Should be a first down. And it is a first down. And the uh, New Jersey's, no, you can't read the numbers, guys. You, you did this once before. That's Medina on the first okay. down, Kerry. Okay. And I don't, you know, I'm going to see some fresh jerseys in there. But I think they come out in uh, a full house in the backfield. And this is Medina again, Medina down to the one-yard line before he is bulldog down. Jonathan Medina will make it first and goal from the one. Yeah, Carol, and we have a whistle. the tackler is down. Yeah, we have a whistle. Players down on the field. And it is the tackler who ended up on the short end of uh, wrestling with Jonathan Medina. And that's Medina's own second carry. These last two carries were his first carries here in the second half. 11-21 to play in the football game. There's timeout on the field as they tend to the injured Wildcat. Hi, this is Julie Oliver. As your local Allstate agent, providing protection that fits your life, I'm committed to learning about your needs and personalizing protection to meet them. Contact me at 760-353-5800. That's 353-5800. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability, life insurance offered through Allstate Life Insurance Company and Allstate Assurance Company, Northbrook, Illinois, and American Heritage Life Insurance Company, Jacksonville, Florida. Well, the uh, injured player, Will Torres, is being helped off. 
he says he's okay. I think it was a cramp. And he says he's okay, but he's going to have to sit down for at least one play. Yes, whenever in high school or college, when you stop play for an injured player, they must leave at least one play. Although Torres, certainly part of the Torres family, his uh, father, Will Torres, is one of the Brawley broadcasters tonight. It is first and goal from the one. Osuna hands off to Medina. Big hole gets into the end zone. Flags fly behind the play. That may not count, so let's wait and see. And here's the call. We have a hold against Central. That's why there was such a big hole. Steve Cato and I could have run hand in hand through that hole, John. So now they're going to move the football back 10 yards. We'll have to see where the spot was. And they'll spot it on about the 14. Now they spot it on the 10. Yeah, the hole was across the line of scrimmage, almost in the end zone. So it's actually an eight-yard loss, spot foul, but it will repeat first down. First and goal from the 10, Medina. It gets the handoff. Medina will get across the 10 to about the eight-yard line. Second and goal from the eight. Medina's third straight carry is obviously Coach Pena is trying to reward his faithful senior with a touchdown here in this Bell game. 76th annual Bell game. Novice Boss has already got three touchdowns tonight. Jose Berlin Torres goes in. We've seen him carry the football, John. Yeah, he is a kicker, but he wants to get out there and get some carries. And well, it looks like they're going to try a field goal. Second and goal. Uh, they have, they brought the tee out. Now I'm not sure. Central might need to take a timeout here to figure this out. Because they've, now they've, yeah, they've sent okay. Torres back with his tee. It is Medina. He's caught from behind, but he stays on his feet and gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Good play and uh, excellent pursuit there by Daniel Coloca. Daniel's a little guy, 6'4", 295. He came over from the left side and got uh, got Medina on the right side. We've got a timeout central. Another Now there's an injured uh, Wildcat. Another injured Wildcat will take the timeout. It is Central, 39, Raleigh, 7. Start the day off right by having breakfast at Broken Yoke Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in the Imperial Valley by our customers. Thank you. Remember, Broken Yoke strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yoke Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yoke Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. Hacienda Snack Bar, bringing you catering at its best for your next party or event. They'll do it right. Let them do the work for you. From appetizers to full course meals, like their tri-tip dinner with their famous cheesy potatoes. Call Hacienda Snack Bar today for your next event at 344-5542. That's 344-5542. Or stop by Hacienda Snack Bar, 941 K Street in Brawley. And it's high school football. We're live on AM 1230 KXO El Centro, California, and on the World Wide Web at KXORadio.com. Adrian Chavez is being helped off the field. He's another one of the Wildcats that goes both ways and has had a tough game tonight. Yeah, as many of them do, Coach Self has that philosophy as most good coaches do. You put your best players on the field. It is third and goal from the nine. Back to pass, Osuna looking, dumps it off, it is complete, staying on his feet and trying to get into the end zone is Medina, and he gets it down to the one, he got hit, but didn't go down, struggled, and gets it down inside the two, they'll spot it on the one, it'll be fourth and goal from the one, yeah, you go for it. Now this would be novice Barca, but I'm sure Medina's going to get the ball, and I'm sure Brawley knows that, and this is not running up the score. Obviously, on fourth down, you kick a field goal, you could have a question about that. But Nava Esparza and Medina are flanking. Yeah, let's see if Nava Esparza leads through the hole. And he does. Medina is hit in the backfield and dropped. And it's Coloca who shot through. Nobody touched him. Yeah, well, everybody in the stadium knew that Medina was going to get the football, so including Coloca. 
and he lined up on the outside, stand up defensive end, and just as soon as the ball was snapped, ran in there. And remember the shotgun, you take the ball five yards behind the line of scrimmage. So by the time Medina got the football and got going, Coloca got Medina. It'll be first and ten for the Wildcats. They have the ball on the four-yard line. Make it the five. It's closer to the five. So uh, it's on their own five-yard line. Yeah, there's just under ten minutes to go here. Brawley with a good defensive stand, playing for some pride. Crickbaum, the single setback. Take it to Crickbaum, and uh, it is Gutierrez looking downfield. There's nothing there. He's hit, and he'll be dropped. And let's see if he actually made it back to the line of scrimmage. Very close. Yeah, not near the goal line. He's, he's he lost a yard. A couple yards. Yeah, it looks like they're going to put him back, back. Back on the three, so it'll be second and 12. What a nightmare half for the Brawley Wildcats, Carol. They have six rushes from scrimmage, five for negative yards, one for no gain. And the one pass they've completed has been good for two yards. Let's go, defense! Big gaps in the offensive line. Get angles on the blocks. Back to pass, dumping it off and incomplete. It was batted down. And getting chippy in there. Yeah, the freshman Gutierrez in the first half, four for five. So far this half, one for five. So not even duplicating his success. And that brings up third and about um, 12 here. Let's call it third and 12, which if they don't make any yards here, they're going to be kicking out of the end of their end zone again. Gutierrez from the shotgun. Again, Craig Baum is right next to him on the right side. The freshman back to pass. It's a little quarterback draw, and he gets it out to the seven. A good positive yard, so very safe play. That should give him room now to try to kick the ball out, and obviously Brawley's going to punt. It's fourth and about seven or eight yards deep in your own territory. Fourth and seven. The first positive rush here in the second half for these Wildcats goes for four yards and it's a quarterback draw. Torres is back in his end zone. He will do the punting. The clock is moving. Low snap. Fumbles it. He picks it up and he is buried and it'll be another safety. Flags fly again all over the place. Yeah, this is going to be celebration against Central but it's not going to erase the two points. So Central now with a 34-point lead. They missed that one extra point. That's our second safety of the night. And let's sort out the laundry. Mr. Campbell, welcome back to the Valley. Did you come back just to get warm? (laughs) Here, hang on a second. We'll 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 give you a chance to talk. Uh, okay, you're in uh, Pueblo. Yes, correct. It's cold in Pueblo. Of course. I spent 18 months in Colorado Springs. I know it's cold in Pueblo. Yeah, it's been it's been cold. So how's it going? Good. You know, uh, getting used to being on my own, and especially so far away, you gotta get used to you know being responsible. But you know, uh, I'm getting used to it. I enjoy it, making friends out there. Are you playing football? I love it, playing football. Okay, what are, what are they running? On defense? Offense and defense. What are you running? Offense, we, we, it's a similar style to Central. You know, we're spread out. Everybody's spread out. Now. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, you throw the ball. Um, defense, we run a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, it's a complicated playbook. Okay. What do you think of tonight's game? You know, I, I'm, I'm very impressed with what they've done. You know, they the uh, back-to-back losses, uh, I think... Um, you know, a little uh, a fire under them, and they're coming out and they're playing aggressive. They're playing strong, and you know, I'm I'm happy to see that my alma mater is balling out. Okay, Tadeo, I appreciate the visit. I know you got family. I see your dad every so often. He said he's going to send you some long shots. Yeah, go. Cool. <laughs> I told him buy them there because they're different. What you get there and what you get here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
anyway, uh, continued success. And what's the, the school? Uh, Colorado State University of Pueblo. Okay, okay. And the nickname? With Thunderwolves. Thunderwolves. Okay, go Thunderwolves. Yeah. We'll be watching for you. Thank you. Thank you. Today, Campbell, uh, visiting in the valley and uh, a big part of the uh, the last two Bell game victories for the uh, for the Spartans. They got everything sorted out and uh, 41 to seven after the second safety of the evening the Wildcats will kick off from the from the, 30, oops, from the 35 after the unsportsmanlike on the safety and from the 10 yard line getting a block and trying to turn up field it is Morales and Morales out to the 39 yard line and again things start to get a little bit chippy and there's no reason for that guys okay 31 to 7 Suck it up. If you do something stupid here, you don't play next week. And next week will be a playoff game for Central unless it's a bye, and then they won't play in two weeks. And if Central wins, they should get the bye. If Brawley, well, they're not going to come back. They may come back with some points, but they're not going to make it all the way back. Yeah, this game's over now, as far except for the determination of the final score. Central puts another score, any score, even another safety, and we'll have the running clock. But it, it's, you have to, and it's the coaches that have to express to the players, control that emotion, yeah, because now. if you do get tossed, you're out. And there's Coach Pena right there at the line of scrimmage doing exactly what you were saying. We want to thank Tadeo Campbell. He's going to stick around and help us sort out some of these numbers that my old eyes are having a hard time seeing with these blended uniforms. It is first and ten, Spartans. And uh, we've got wholesale changes. It is Eric Garcia, the junior, in at quarterback. And we would think he would be the starting quarterback next year. Snap, handoff, and nothing in the middle. Hit hard. No quit there on the Wildcat side as uh, they hit Eric Moreno for a four-yard loss. And we're just going to let the clock run and get out of here with nobody getting hurt. That's the idea at this point. Yeah, Eric's wondering, uh, Coach, why are we calling that play when I'm the one running the football? <laughs> Let's go ahead and try to do some kind of sweep or something. Let me run that. Let me run that play with the first string line in there, okay? Well, the entire Brawley team, as you mentioned, down in the goal line, they knew that Medina was going to get the football. That time, they know whoever's back there is going to get the football, and they were all coming. And again. The handoff, and this time it's Ricardo Carvajal. Carvajal picks up a yard, but it, it you know, goes back to my playing days. Coach, come on, let me run with the first string line, and, you know, I can I can do something. Yeah, this is not good for your health when you're running. Those Brawley guys are just absolutely and crushing you. There are no changes in the Brawley defense. This is as you would expect. This is the team that started. They are here. And this we is have, the Bell game, so they're going to finish this game out. We have seen Garcia pass. He can pass. He won't pass. And he hands it off. And again, it is Carbajal, and Carbajal gets about eight yards. Yeah, Ricardo Carbajal. Again, thanks to our spotter in the booth, a young man that was carrying a 4.2 GPA here at Central. Carbajal took it out for a nice pickup, but it's still fourth down, so Berlin Torres will get his chance to show his foot. You know, if you reverse that from 4.2 to 2.4, you'd get close to where I was. Fourth and seven. From the 42-yard line, snap back, kick is away, beautiful kick, and it'll bounce at the 15, roll down inside the 10, and it'll be down at the 7. It'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats 
on their own seven-yard line. Day in and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always day come in first. Day and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service. The Wildcats come out. It'll be first and ten. Gutierrez has Craigbaum behind him. Craigbaum, we've pointed out, 5'6", about 190. He gets the football, nothing inside. He turns it to the outside, gets it across the 10 to the 15 to the 16-yard line. Craigbaum, he's got that bowling ball size, very low center of gravity. Yeah, this difficult drive. to bring down, and he's got some speed and quickness to go with it. And, and true toughness. And this drive is going to improve the Brawley stats that we mentioned. They're negative yards up until this drive, but they're probably going to come away with some positive yards here. Craig Baum has been in on every play, offense and defense. And sometimes even punting. Vincent defeated Mountain Empire 42-14. That's a final. And that will keep Vincent seated number one in Division Five. And the handoff in the middle on that wing and swinging it upfield is Damian Reyes. Reyes picks up the first down, spotted on the 27-yard line. Carol, that's the first first down here in the second half for the Raleigh Wildcats. And with that, we've got 430 to play in the ball game. Let's go defense! Gutierrez is under center. Craig Baum is behind him. The power run formation here. Handoff on a bit of a delay. And again, that is Reyes. Yeah, they put Craig Baum in the backfield to lead through the hole, but then Reyes actually cut behind him like a counter was able to pick up a good four and a half, we'll call it five yards. It'll be second and five. The clock continues to run. Brawley has already used at least two of their timeouts. That's correct, and I would be stunned if they took another timeout here. Southwest 35, Calexico 20 in the third quarter. It looks like Calexico's finally wearing out down there. They second and five, Crick bomb the single setback. Reyes goes in motion. Reyes gets a handoff. Goes behind Creek Bomb. Gets a block downfield. Crosses the 40 to the 42 yard line before he is swarmed on. Reyes with another nice run. But again, let's point out it is Central's second team defense and Brawley's first team offense. And they're smoking mad, meaning Brawley's first team offense. They've totally been dominated this entire game, so they're going to make good use of this second string. And they've already run out for a couple first downs. Remember, this drive started on the 7, so they've already taken it out 35 yards to the Brawley 42. Clock continues to move. First and 10, under center. And it is Craig Baum. Craig Bum has five out to the 47. No quitting that young man. He really took a big hit and then powered forward. Today we appreciate you sticking around. If you do need to get with friends or family or whatever, it looks like Raleigh's just going to keep running the ball down the field. We've only got 2.40 to go with the clock moving. But thank you very much for your help. Say hi to Mom and Dad. you got some good people behind you. It is second and six. And he did mention Joey Tarango is his roommate and also teammate on the football team there. Ray is in motion. The handoff, however, is to Craig Baum. And Craig Baum will pick up about three more. Yeah, Craig Baum is going to sleep well tonight. The game's going to leave a bad taste in his mouth. But that young man's been on the field for almost every snap, offense and defense. He has nothing to hang his head 
for this is they're going to put the ball right across the 50-yard line, so it's going to bring up third and about two. And a final score, Imperial defeated Palo Verde 34-13. No surprise there. Right straddling the midfield strike. Looks like Mickey and George will be getting a playoff game next week. We don't know if it's going to be home or not. Minute 30 to play. It is third and about three. Pitch deep to Craig Baum. Turns it upfield. And we'll get across the 45 down to about the 40-yard line. Let's see where they spot it. Third first down here of this drive as the clock continues to move. We're under a minute and a half to go. Spotted on the right on the 40. Another 10-yard pickup for Craig Baum. So he is over 100 yards now. For Ollie, back on the plus side, we'll have all the stats at the conclusion of the game. Just about a minute to play in this ball game. And to Brawley's pride, Carol, that makes extra point, kept this from being a running clock, which Brawley's varsity has not had a running clock yet in any game they've played. Reyes goes in motion, but the handoff is to Craig Baum. Craig Baum down to the 35. Woody Hayes would love this. Bo Schembechler. They'd be eating this up, John. Unfortunately, right. it's just killing the clock. Yeah, right. Well, that's Brawley wants to do that, though. They're, they'll go ahead and get ready for the playoffs. They'll be in the playoffs. Let's see if this is a final play. Brawley does have a timeout. I'd be shocked if Coach Self took that right now. The clock is going to be under 20 seconds by the time they get this playoff. And they come out to the spread. And back to pass is Gutierrez. He's hit and sacked back at the 45-yard line. And on that, it was Christian Morse. And that should untouched. be the final play of the game as Brawley takes the sack. And now they're moving off the field. And Central, for the third straight year, will maintain the bell. Our final score as time runs out, 41-7. The Central Spartans dominate the uh, football game after the single bright spot for the Wildcats, a 75-yard first play of the game touchdown run by Blake Krigbaum. And from that point on, it was all Central Spartans. We'll have some numbers and share some other information with you coming up on AM 1230 KXOL Centro and on the web at kxoradio.com. When you crave Mexican food, are you not sure where to go? I'll give you a suggestion. La Fonda Bar and Grill. Yes, the Camacho family is still doing it right with freshly made Mexican food. From enchiladas to special quesadillas and everything is handmade. And of course, Miss Camacho, she still comes in to make sure everybody's favorite chili rianos are there. La Fonda Bar and Grill. 1950 South 4th Street in El Centro. Open Wednesday through Monday for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's the Beauty Fall Flooring Sale now until November 30th. Dermis Floor Covering is offering 24 months special financing on Shaw Floors, Anderson Tough Decks, and Cortec Flooring. Whether you need carpet, hardwood, vinyl, or something to withstand pets, kids, or water, rest assured there's flooring that's just right for your lifestyle on approved credit. Visit Dermis Flooring at 220 North J Street in Imperial. No matter what you need to keep your home cool and comfortable, RK Air Conditioning has it. From complete Temp Star cooling systems to the latest in Wi Fi capable thermostats, we have everything you need to stay comfortable. That's why you should make RK Air Conditioning your first and only call for your cooling needs. Call 760 353 7570 or find us online at rkair.net. Temp Star, quality you can feel. You are listening to High School Football on AM 1230 KXOL Centro and on the World Wide Web at KXORadio.com. Flautas y Flautas, delicious authentic Mexican food, just $6.49 for a dozen flautas. Combo meals for any appetite, with three locations in the valley. 715 Cesar Chavez Boulevard in Calexico, 1531 Ford Drive next to Foods for Less in El Centro, and 1622 South 4th Street next to Soul Market in El Centro. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in Calexico and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. In El Centro. Don't forget, you can go online for our menu and call in your order ahead of time. Flautas y Sopes, the real deal. Well, the uh, Brawley Wildcats started the party, and after that, 
it was all Central Spartans as they dominated tonight and came away with a 41-7 to victory. The uh, Wildcats, as we said, their first play from scrimmage was a uh, 75-yard run by Blake Krigbaum. And uh, from that point on, well, it was all the Central Spartans as they rolled up scores, scored on offense, scored on defense, two safeties in the game, and uh, as I said, just ended up dominating 41-7 to when it was all over. The uh, Spartans, as we have seen Coach David Pena do throughout the year, and last year, goes deep into his bench. He has no problem putting, uh, substituting uh, often and uh, sharing the football. We had about six different ball carriers tonight for the uh, Spartans, and uh, all of them seem to do quite well. A couple of things uh, coming up Tuesday. This coming Tuesday... It will be the uh, Imperial Valley Music Educators Association Halftime Festival, and that's where all of the high school bands in the Valley will be performing right here at Cal Jones Field on the campus of Central High School. It is not a competition. It is an opportunity for the bands to showcase or strut their stuff in front of all the other high school bands. Because they're kind of like us, John. They're working, you know, while the other bands are performing, and they don't get a chance to see them. So that's coming up Tuesday. John, you have some numbers for us? Right, and they show exactly what the scoreboard shows. Central totally dominated at the half. Raleigh had 106 yards. Uh, total, they ended up with 138, but that's only because that last drive got them 50 yards. So they would have been negative yards in the second half. Brawley ran the ball 33 times from scrimmage for 131. Take away the one, y- the one rush Carroll for 75 yards, and now you're talking 32 attempts for 62 yards. So that's obviously less than two yards an attempt. Five for ten was the super freshman Gutierrez but only seven total yards, giving Brawley 138 total yards. Eight first downs. Three of those came on that last drive when Central had emptied the bench. There was one fumble recovered by Navas Farsa, who ran it back for a touchdown. No interceptions. On the other side of the football, Central ran it 36 times from scrimmage. That's after only 12 times in the first half, 24 in the second. 208 yards, and that's a lot of yards to get in. Most of it in the half as they um, had 105 at halftime. They doubled that. So Central ended up with 208 total rushing yards. Only in the uh, second half, four passing attempts from the super senior, De Niro Osuna, goes out with his third straight bell victory. Osuna ended up 8 for 21 for 112 yards, giving Central a very respectable 320 total yards to Brawley's 138. 17 first downs for Central, so they more than double total yards of Brawley. They more than double first downs. And again, a very important figure in all Bell games, Central had no turnovers. Individually, Central had a whole slew of ball carriers carrying the football. Let's start with, in the first half, Marcus Moore had a carry for six yards. He was followed by Fernando Morales, one carry for four yards, but Fernando had a big punt return and a kickoff return that set Central up in very good posi- field position. Danero Suna was sacked once in the second half. Two positive carries for a negative 11 yards. The big ball carrier in the night, Carlos Gomez, ended up with 11 carries for 132 yards. That's about 11 yards per rushing attempt. The only thing Carlos didn't do tonight was get in the end zone. Jonathan Medina, seven carries, 21 yards. And Angel Navas Barca finishing out his IVL career, the playoffs wait, had 11 carries, 52 yards, and a total of three touchdowns. Two on the ground, one on that strip sack. The receptions, eight of them, 
were spread out among six different ball, uh, six different receivers, and we've seen that. De Niro Suna likes to spread it around. With one reception, Juan Dominguez for 12 yards. Also, Marcus Morgan getting uh, two receptions for 21 yards. Fernando Morales, one catch for 10 yards. Michael Sullivan, two catches, 42 yards. Getting his first reception of the year, Brian Martin, for a 20-yard touchdown. Also, you had Juan, excuse me, we had Jonathan Medina getting one reception for seven yards. So all in all, Carol, it's been a tremendous evening for the Spartans. They should get a bye now. They should be rated in the top four. Brown will have to wait and see their fate, whether or not they'll be able to get a home game next week or not. Uh, Same with Imperial. But uh, this has been a dominating performance. And now when you look back, Carol, the other team starting a freshman at quarterback, really not that surprising that uh, the defense was able to totally throttle these Brawley Wildcats. And for the Brawley faithful marching and chatter society, their freshman team, to my knowledge, was undefeated, and their quarterback was right here playing varsity. So they do have some, some talent coming up in the future for Brawley. But right now, tonight, Central absolutely destroys Brawley in the 76th annual Bell game, beating Brawley 41-7. to Well, John, it's not what we had anticipated. I know we had talked uh, during the week and talked uh, this evening about we were really anticipating a... Uh, a good game, an evenly matched uh, game tonight, and uh, we didn't see it. And it just kind of makes me wonder uh, what what went wrong or what went right. The uh, Wildcats came in tonight 7-2, and two, an impressive uh, run, and uh, did it methodically throughout the uh, the season, the IVL season. The um, Spartans, well, we saw a couple of hits and misses with them. One thing that, if I'm coach, I'm a little bit concerned about, their passing game tonight was not particularly good. And that is something that uh, was very, very good for the uh, Spartans earlier in the uh, the uh, the season, so uh, is that something they're going to have to work on? You bet them, they're going to have to work on getting uh, a little bit better protection for De Niro Osuna, and let him work and uh, get the ball. He had receivers open, and uh, in the past we've seen open receivers drop the ball. Tonight, he just didn't quite get it to them. So, uh, you know, that's receivers and uh, quarterbacks got to be on the same page. What went on around the Valley tonight? Well, last night, 42 to, uh, to nothing. It was uh, Hopeville over uh, Calipat. Vincent defeated Mountain Empire 42-14 tonight. It's Imperial 34, Palo Verde 13. That's a final. Southwest 42, Calexico 20. That's still playing. And uh, our final score, Central 41, Brawley 7. We want to thank Kurt Hoffman for his technical assistance, Gabe Lemus for his production and engineering abilities, our uh, halftime uh, surprise guest, Steve Cato, and, of course, uh, Tadeo Campbell, who stopped by and gave us some insights into what... Uh, What's going on, not only here, but back in Colorado where he's attending college. So uh, that's it. We, uh, we are anticipating the Spartans will have a bye next week. So doubtful John and I will be on the air because it's very doubtful that Southwest will make it into the playoffs. Uh, Mickey and George will have an Imperial CIF first round game. We don't know where that one's going to go yet. We'll just have to kind of wait and see. But again, for Kurt, for Gabe, for John, I'm Carol. Thank you for listening in. You can go back and listen again on the website, kxoradio.com. Good night. The Imperial Valley's best oldies on the radio.